Can everybody hear me? Yep. Oh, yes. Yep. yep. And we okay. have start. I have to begin the recording. Okay. Burn the beast! They all say in the streets of Lippitstadt. Not exactly all of them, though, because the beast has found some allies in you uh, and in one of the justices, even though Justice Ambeth, of course, would never say so openly because it would uh, um, make people question her neutrality in this. So she's hired you to take a closer look into the affairs that the beast is currently accused of. Um, you have... The last time we spoke, you were talking to Barrister Gustav Kappel, who... What is that? No, no never mind. Who um, was... I lost my train of thought. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, who was uh, who was officially charged with defending the beast, but um, who doesn't really have a reputation of being an, uh, especially successful, which probably comes from the fact that he hasn't successfully defended anyone over the course of his entire career. Um, he does know a lot about the procedures uh, and the the intricacies of protocol that are involved in the arcane um, system that is the Lepichstad legal system. And he has told you uh, everything you need to know about the, the proceedings of the trial that is going to play out over the next couple of days with each crime um, that the beast supposedly committed taking up one day of court time. Unfortunately, the rules state that all the evidence and all the testimonies need to be um, delivered to the court before 10 a.m., which puts you in a little bit of a tight spot because the proceedings are about to start the very next day. And the first crime, the um, killing of 10 people in the small town of Morast, a hamlet in the Dippelmere Swamp, only eight miles east of Lippstadt is the first crime that you're trying to shed some light on because some of the details just doesn't smell right to you. Um, last time you were about to leave the barrister's office, but before you close the door behind you, he stops you one last time, and he says, "I, uh, <clears throat> I, I mean, if you're from." Lippitstadt, you p p p p probably know this, but I feel it is my obligation to inform you about, <clears throat> you know, the the things that people say about the people of Borast. Uh, that... What do they say of the people of Borast? Well, they say that sometime in their ancestry and... They are a fairly isolated town, even though they are just outside of L L Lippichstadt. That they, they mingled with strange swamp creatures, and that it t t tainted their b blood and marked them with queer c c countenances. It's you see, the the people of Morast have legendary constitutions. This sickness is rare among the swampers, even though that the, the, there's not even a healer in town, as far as I know, and the villagers all live long and healthy lives. They're, Isn't that a good thing? It, 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 it does sound like it, doesn't it? But they they just don't look right. I mean, they're, they're, they aren't just a curious group. Oh, come on, it's just a... A mere superstition. It's nothing that can be explained by generations of inbreeding. And... I just f f felt like it is, I should tell you this in case you didn't, haven't heard about it. Yeah. It's a 
right, all right. So we'll, we'll keep it in mind. for a healer there. Yeah. Got it. And thus, you take your leave. Well, I suppose so. Okay. How do you want to travel to Morast? Well, uh, right away. Mm -hmm. We have no time to lose. Yeah. Right. And I hope Lady Evelyn will <clears throat> help us out with this one. Of course. Uh, hopefully there's been time to get the, the horses watered and rested while we've been traveling about town uh, and we'll get them saddled up or ready to go carry pull the carriage as soon as we can there's no time to waste and we'll be arriving at a foul hour to be sure i don't no. think we should expect a warm welcome so Okay. So you head out, of course, the um, well-paid servants of Evelyn have already done their job and took good care of the carriage and the horses, and it is ready to take you out towards Morast. Unfortunately, the trail that leads from Lepichta to the village is not really the sort of trail that supports coach travel. So you can take the coach about two to three miles maybe out of the city, but then um, the trail branches off from the main road and you have to uh, continue by foot. You said it was 10 miles? Eight miles. Eight miles. Um, however, you make your way there and uh, you... you, you uh, kind of bushwhack the last little bit. It really seems like there's not much traffic going in and out of Morast, at least not towards Lippitstadt. And it takes you the better part of the morning. Um, so you get there just after noon. Mm -hmm. Morast itself... Oh, wait, let me change the map. A bit of an impression of what that town looks like. Morast itself is a miserable collection of 20 or so wattle and daub hovels that are built on stilts above the swamp, connected by soggy wooden boardwalks. It looks like the only thing that villagers can really do is to make a living is probably fishing. Um, from the documents that the barrister Cutter was showing you, you remember that the uh, main witness who is about to testify in front of the court the next day is the village elder, Lazny, and somewhat of the of a star witness by the prosecution. Um, and you ask your way through town, um, grim faces everywhere, gruff answers, general feeling of not really feeling welcome here. Um, but not openly hostile, just very reserved. Um, but they're helpful enough to point you to their elder, who's a grizzled, middle-aged man, dirty gray hair, and skin the color of swamp mud. He chews on a foul-smelling swamp weed, and as you approach him, he spits some weed juice onto the ground. I don't like much city folk, furriners. He starts the conversation. Well, we're sorry to hear that. Well, what is that you're drinking? He's not drinking. He's just spitting to... 
the the he's chewing swamp weed. I'll probably send you to the prairie right away, he said. Want a bite? And he gives, shows you a uh, 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 mass of weeds and just some dark, chunky bits in there. Sure, I'll give it a try. Okay. You take a fingerful of it, shove it in your mouth, and it has a very kind of a nutty flavor to it. But it makes your bile rise up in in uh, in your throat. Yeah, that's that's good. Good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Always happy to uh, get to know the local flavors. So, um. Pardon our intrusion, we'll keep it brief as to not disturb you any longer than we have to. But um, we have several questions and we're hoping you would be able to help us. Help you? I'll answer all the questions tomorrow in court. We'll make that beast burn. Well, you see, uh, what we're here to determine is, um, well, whether that beast deserves to burn at all. <laughs> the question, even. Of course, beast deserves to burn, silly woman. And what makes you so sure of that, exactly? Ah. Uh. You ever heard its name? The Beast? It's bad. That's obvious. Silly woman. Oh, so a name is enough to put the creature to death. Uh, you'll hear all about it tomorrow at court. Okay. What, what, what would it take for you to just humor us and that's what you know right now. I told you, I don't like much city folk. So, see, I just is, like to see you gone. Well, we would like to be gone, but uh, we're trying to follow through, and we do want to watch the beast burn. But you know how city folk are with their procedures and laws, and but we're afraid they won't put the beast to the fire unless we have compelling evidence that it was responsible after all. Do you want to try a diplomacy check on this? And somebody, the others can help if they want to. Yeah. So, but it sounds like Gaia is taking the lead a little bit. Yep. Well, uh, I think it's more, would it be a diplomacy or a bluff? No, I that's don't it. That we're... Yeah, but it's not, it's not, you know, it's sort of, it's a converse, it's a whole process. It's not just this one thing that's going to it's gonna sway him or not. So Evelyn is helping. Who else is helping? Yeah, Doctor even. Yeah, he like nods with a very, very intelligent expression on his face. Like mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> like exactly. I'm, yes, I, I, I wouldn't want to just burn the beast without exact evidence. It's just not how it's done. I mean I mean, okay, so the, the, even the, the yeah. doctor seems to be helping a little bit, but um, the elf with the group is, gets a little bit of a stink eye from the elder. <laughs> and he says, I don't, I, I don't know. I don't know if we need to talk about all of this again. Well, I mean, my time is valuable, you see. I got much to do, he says, and leans back on his rocking chair. It'd be a shame if he walks free. Sure would. That's why I'm testifying tomorrow at court. Uh, Gaia turns towards Evelyn. Hey, um... Mm -hmm. Excuse me? 
money. Do you have money? Yes. To bribe him. Oh, you want to? You you want me to give him money? I see my money. I take it. Um, <clears throat> I mean, I can't give what's not mine, and I have none of my own. So. Didn't we all just get a rather handsome paycheck? Oh yeah, we did. That's right. Yeah, but you're the charismatic one. Yeah, and Evelyn. Go ahead. Huh? Evelyn's Wait. rolling her eyes and she goes, I, I, "Give me a moment to fish in my purse for something appropriate." Yeah, and meanwhile, Aranax will try to make small talk. Uh, <laughs> I think. So, you're a good sir. What? What you doing around here in in the in this fine fine pl uh, place of Morath? <clears throat> yeah, excuse me, sir. Would you classify this area as a bog, a marsh, or a swamp? Yes, exactly. We had uh, an academic uh, uh, dispute with with my, with my colleagues on the way here. I was sure that the bog was something in the forest. No, no, this is more a swamp. No, that's, that's probably a bog. No, silly you. It's just morassed. That's all it is. So let's just say neither, neither Dr. Aranax or I was right, and we'll call it a marsh. Yeah, okay, I'm, I'm willing to concede at this point. Uh... Say, do you need any uh, any alchemical expertise around here? I, I don't need no help from Furnace. Uh, Thank you very much. I didn't think so. So, you. Uh, hmm? uh, look, uh, Mister. Uh, what was the? It was Lasney. Was that your name? That's right, sweetheart. Well, I can see that uh, this lovely little uh, charming town has everything that it could possibly need and uh, no desire for anyone else to come poking around here. Uh, so, unfortunately, it is our duty to do a little bit of poking. Um, and, well, you see, you don't want us here, and... Quite frankly, I think that we would probably rather be returning home before it gets too late. Uh, however, duty must be done. We have things that we have to attend to. And, uh, well, the way I see it, we could have either go snooping around town, wandering, talking to citizens, disturbing the peace, which we don't want to do, mind you, but it is our obligation. Or... Perhaps we could simply find out what we need to know from you and be on our way. He takes a good long look at you. Give me a diplomacy check, please. Another one. I'll assist. How? Oh, well, no. By throwing money at him. No, that's fine. <laughs> I think she'll be all right. So he'll he'll give her a long, hard look, and then he grins a crooked, crooked smile. You can see one, one gold tooth in the corner, but it's sort of uh, blackened by that icky seaweed he's chewing. And he spits right past Evelyn, <laughs> and he says, "Don't need you walking around town stirring up the neighbors." All right, all right. I'll tell you what the beast did. You know, it first came to the town. And it only took lone villagers who were outside at night. But soon, it got bolder. And he even attacked houses. That's when I got some men together. And we set a trap. 
he seems mighty proud of himself for the strategic cunning that he uh, mustered. A trap, you say? How? I I don't understand. How could you possibly hope to trap the beast? I mean, I've seen it in person. It stands over ten feet tall. It's horrifying to look upon. I, uh, I, uh, I oh, just don't know how they could do sweetie. it. How could... Sweetie, don't underestimate the guts of a man. You'd probably be intimidated by it, but I got some some fine people out here that have seen a thing or two. That some of them wrestled a blood caiman, you know. So I remember the night. And he leans forward. We were all lying in wait, just waiting for the beast to show up. And it usually came just after nightfall. Got us some torches. And then we charged the beast. So we attacked it. Bashed it. Burned it. And we managed to wound it. It's a huge beast. He's like, you know, it's, it's he raises his arms up. It's like seven feet tall. It's a hulking creature. It's a real brute. Mm -hmm. Burning good, though. Yeah, the, the green screen and must it be just... awful, right? The what? Uh, Aaron X adds, like, yeah, like, that that green skin is something inhuman, right? I don't know what you're talking about. It was dark that night. Couldn't see very well, but when we burned it, its skin sure got black. Ah, uh, see. But it ran off, took to the water, and we gave chase in our boats. We pursued it all the way to the boneyard. And then, irony maybe, maybe fate, the beast was attacked by another beast. One of those blood caimans out there. Hmm. And then he grins once again and he says, Should have hurt the beast. Curse. Yell oaths that even the worst whore in Lippenstab would blush to say. <laughs> and he looks, gives, gives uh, Evelyn a disgusting look as he says that. He should also, the, the, cause we couldn't see much, but we could clearly see the deep bite wound the gator mate on the beast's shoulder right here, he says. And he points to his shoulder. Drag the beast underwater. The, all the all the water turned blood red. All the way to the burial ground. So kind of abandoned it. Building another one. But just small price to pay for the beast's death, we thought. Now we heard beast is still alive. So... I'm going to go downtown. I'll tell my story to them. Then we'll all watch it burn. Uh, do you remember on that that terribly dreadful night uh, exactly what the beast was doing when you attacked it? Or where it came from? Where it was. He looks at, at Evelyn as if she just suggested that flicks, uh, pigs could fly. She's, I came to snatch villagers, eat him, or something like that. Whatever the beast does with them. Just told you, woman, listen closely when a man talks. But, like, so, so you attacked the beast at one point, okay, but have you ever seen the beast attack any of you before that? Well, there was, people saw it at night, you know. Like I said, huge hulking thing attacking just after nightfall. I mean, what is there to, what else is there to know about it? I mean, imagine if there was a second beast. It's just ridiculous. There's only one beast around Leopardstadt, and everybody knows that. You said that this... The, the beast was attacking houses. Uh, I don't suppose there's any still still any um, 
remains or signs of its attack? Any battle scars that this town bears? Hey, wait, it's been quite some time. We fixed it all up good. Hmm, I see. But if you if you have to, you can go down to the boneyard and look at the place where we, where we got it, where we caught the beast. Right, of course. The boneyard. I mean, uh, I'd even take you there personally, my dear. But you know, only two people per boat at a time. I'm afraid. Oh, I'm I'm sure we can find our way just fine if you are willing to point us in the direction. Yeah, we'll make our own way. Um, sure, Karnas, you can try um, a perception check. Let's do that in hindsight. Of course, it's going to be tough to remember. But that's a fairly good result. And the way they describe the wound... Um, Um, it should have been very obvious, but you don't remember anything that obvious. Maybe there was mm -hmm. some scar tissue there or something that would be hard to tell with the stitched up skin that the beast has, but certainly no gaping, huge gator wound. Well, yeah, besides the healing process on golems, it's somewhat more involved than just regeneration, I suppose. Although. And, uh, yeah, to Evelyn's suggestion, to, suggestion should just be pointed there. He says, sure, sure. If you don't want to come with me, sweetie, you can rent a boat down at the piers. But it'll cost you five gold pieces. I'd take you for a ride for free. Oh, he's willing to take us for free. What a gentleman. Oh, I would be... Happy to ride with you, actually, Mr. Lasney. I simply didn't want to disturb you from your, uh, your reclination here. Oh, I'd find some time. And he gets up, and he says, all right, let's go. And when you start moving, he turns around and he says, no, just the lady, of course. Like I said, two people per boat. Hmm. Well, we'll just take a second boat after. Yeah, he grumbles. Uh, that'll cost you. Somebody's got to drive those, and you don't look like you know how to steer a, a, a coracle. Well, I think we uh, we found the. Main source of income of the village now. But never mind, I think we can afford that for now. Well, especially Lady Evelyn can afford that. But... Oh, well, I seem to have found myself a chaperone already. Yes. Yeah, was... What a gentleman. Let's procure a boat for ourselves. Yeah. So it's five gold pieces per person, basically, except for Evelyn, since mm -hmm. she. So riding for free, <clears throat> and uh, you, yeah, you arrange transportation, and uh, each of you gets seated on a small coracle with another uh, swamper, taking the the oar, I guess, or the pole to push you through the swamp. Um, all of the villagers have this sort of strange skin color, this mud-colored skin, like the Elder has, which is a little off-putting. But they're polite enough, at least they're not as gross as the Elder himself. And so you make your way um, direction north, down a little waterway in the swamp where the where uh, the water is a little more flowing, but it doesn't appear to be very deep. And you keep going for about a mile north until you get to a tiny, miserable island that rises from the swamp. A tangle of trees covering its dour, reed-choked surface. 
you see hundreds of fetishes that hang from the trees. Simple, roughly humanoid figures made of sticks and bound with twine. Larger fetishes are planted in the ground on various parts of the island. Lean drunkenly in the soft mud. A large nest built of sodden swamp wood sits high in the boughs of a trio of tangled trees on the northwest side of the isle. And once that's spotted, you can see the all the swampers, including the elder, get a little restless, get a little uneasy. And I say, and you see them kind of whisper to each other. And I say, all right, uh, you think you know how to... Uh, uh, the, the way we, you got here, right? So uh, we'll we'll see you back at at Moras then, or maybe we'll see you in court tomorrow. Uh, we'll we'll leave you enough coracles to find the way back. All right, no charge. Hmm. Oh, that's, that's of mighty kind of you. All right, all right. The elder says, and he's oh. not even interested in flirting with uh, Evelyn anymore. So he's like, oh, 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 all right, thank you. you... Gotta go. Uh, oh, very well then. Um, Lovely old man. And they yeah. qu quickly, almost panicky, leave you behind. Uh, but it reminds well, me of I was meaning dad. meaning to yeah. was meaning to ask him about the blood caimans, but well, judging I by think how we're gonna the... figure that out soon enough. Yeah, judging how fast they left, I suppose we, we will have a chance to encounter them very quickly. So... So this is where they... What he spots. Yeah. This is where they chased the thing and where they where the blood came and attacked it, right? Mm -hmm. That's what they say, yep. Yeah, okay. I wonder how they... Did they chase the thing right on the on boats like this, or was it the beast? It sounded like that. Yeah, it sounded like that. So the beast was probably uh, walking, walking on water, um, like, and waiting. Yeah. No, it's not that deep. So it was wading through the oh. through the swamp, and they were on their coracles. Hmm. I see. Very interesting. Emeril is going to pop the spell and then help with the looking for clues. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you start and... looking around the island. <clears throat> and uh, uh, at this point, Aranax will pop one of his and and howl extracts, so he will be able to move freely without in any encumbrance. Tire turns, turns to, to the bird in his, in his shoulder and I'm like, go on, fly a bit. You wouldn't want to be caught with me and it pops out of the water. <coughs> the, All right, Jorik, off you go. This strange bird kind of pushes himself off of Geyer's arm, cutting into his finger as he does so, or his, his uh, flesh as he does so, and flies off. Ah, first touch. Ah, first touch. Um, you just, as you as you start looking around the island, um, Evelyn and Emerald, you inspect that strange nest-like structure that's sitting up there, twenty feet in the trees, just above the the island. But it is Geyer whose gaze is obviously immediately drawn to the various graves around this burial site. And one thing is especially suspicious to him, the fact that six of the graves have sagged into the ground as though they had collapsed from below. You can clearly see the wide depressions in the muddy earth if you know what to look for. Well, it's not really mm, uncommon for strange. fresh graves. In my experience, when you dig a grave, the bodies tend to bloat, and the grave evens out. Like not 
sink in like these. Well, I mean, the fresh graves, uh, I mean, they sink in a little bit before, be, well, before, because, you know, well, I mean, you're the grave digger, though, if I explain it, you, you probably should know better. Uh, Doctor, you can give me a uh, craft alchemy check. Mm -hmm. And Gar will start digging. Start digging, all right. Wait, Gar, it's, it's rather rude to, you know, to just start digging old, any people's graves, don't you think? Oh, I'm sure they won't mind. They're already dead. Okay. And uh, Geyer does it in a respectful way. He knows how to dig a grave. Um, Aranax also knows, or you would, from your, your studies about preserving those tiny little creatures into the bottles, you know that uh, there is a preserving effect of bogs and swamps. So a body interred into this earth, into this soil, um, would probably not rot per se, well, that's very but nice more ter but only more like mummify mm -hmm. with a highly acidic water, low oxygen, low temperatures. Ah, so it's like a natural balsamic effect, so, so to speak. It's mm -hmm. very, very curious. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Emeril and uh, Evelyn, like I said, you were more inspecting the nest up there, but Emeril is aware enough of his surroundings to also notice that near the southern end of the boneyard, there are the remains of what almost looks like a campsite. Small fire pit. There's even the water skin that's still half full of wine. Some aged remnants of trail rations or something like that. And a curious glass vial. The bottom of the vial contains some dried remains of a green substance that smells vaguely of carrots. Hmm. Hmm. It's... Does the campsite look recent? Um... Give me a second. Whatever it is, it's not mine. Ah, oh, there it is. Um, no, it does not look recent. It looks... I mean, the, the murder was a year ago, so... Uh, it may, may be that old, even. Okay, uh, I think Emeril is going to pick up the little vial and the uh, doctor. Can you look at this? Well, sounds... and as you hold it up for uh, the doctor to take a look at it, all of you. I'm gonna roll perception checks, please. Even Gaia, even though he's busy distracted digging. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because even while you're digging, you cannot miss the flapping of large, leathery wings. Hi above you and it is the wings are soon joined by a roaring call and uh evelyn as you as you your gaze is still directed upwards you're the first one to see this vaguely humanoid head body of a lion and the wings of a dragon flying above you 
Its belly is uh, quite big, as if the creature was pregnant. And it seems to be very, very mad to find you here. Let's roll for initiative. Hmm. Oh dear. It took words right out of my mouth. So we have Gaia at 19. Alex. Eleven. And Emerald. Uh, I think Emerald is going to to uh, dismiss the spell to gain the the bonus on initiative. It was four. So you end up at sixteen. That doesn't really change anything, but okay. Um, Aranax, you're the first one to act. The creature is um, near the the treetops, which is about. Um, 30 feet up, 35 maybe. Mm -hmm. And my bombs are range increment 20. So it would be uh, minus one no, to attack, right? Or minus two out of, out of range increment range attacks. Uh, each range increment is two. So. It is clearly clearly going to attack us, right? I, I suppose. Yeah, 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 yeah. There is no question about it. It's like a very territorial beast. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, in that case, uh, Aaron X will not mince any words uh, and go straight to the bombing. That'll be 25 minus 2. So you're lopping it up there, and it yep. goes off at just the right time. Uh, two, that's 8 points fire. Yep. You blast the lion creature for 8 points. Gaia. Is uh, Yorick nearby that flying creature? Do you want to look around for him? Uh, but I mean, it, if I'm seeing the creature action. and I don't see Yorick around, then Gyre will st stretch out his hand and feel the force of magic missiles leave his hand. Right. And they zoom and zing through the swamp air and hit the creature for five, enraging it even more. And as it uh, flies up there, it dives down a little bit and then um, and then flies back up, but not before it throws a volley of, of spikes from its tail. Some of those spikes that you can see on its tail actually loosen and come flying towards you. Um, since you're all still fairly close to each other, all within 30 feet, it even manages to um, send one spike to each of you. So, but that is still uh, four individual rolls. <clears throat> So let's start with Evelyn. No, that's wrong. Sorry. Yeah, that's wrong. No, I did not put them in the macro. I'll have to roll them separately. So let's start with the attack roll. Yeah, 
That's a hit. Okay. So that will be 46 plus 5. So it's 8 points of damage. Then Ouch. Gyre, uh, uh, a, a spike flies your way, a 13. Question, if if I'm already digging into the hole, does that give me partial cover? No, you're not that <laughs> far. Okay. Uh, cool. All right, so... And also it's up there, so it has a very good angle. So it's a 12... 12 to 8... No, 13. 13. Sorry. 13. Yeah, it hits. Mm -hmm. Okay. That is 6 points of damage. Amarel. Uh, 15. Miss. Okay, and Doctor. 21. Yep, that's it. 6 points of damage. And it roars once more as it gains elevation again. MRL. Uh, first of all, would like to know what is this thing? Okay, knowledge arcana. Nice. You heard about creatures like that. I mean, they are very, very um, obvious to identify. They are manticores. Fierce predators that patrol a wide area in search of fresh meat. Um, it is large. It's about 10 feet long and weighs about 1,000 pounds. Um, they eat any meat, even carrion, but they prefer human flesh. And they rarely pass, pass up an opportunity for such a delicacy. They're smart and social enough to bargain with or bully evil humanoids into alliances or offering tribute. And more, <clears throat> and more powerful creatures may hire or bribe them. Um, although manticores were likely a magical creation, they have long since established themselves as a naturally occurring species. Curiously, manticores seem strangely fecund and can interbreed with a number of other similarly shaped creatures, including lions, diolions, lamias, sphinxes, and even uh, chimeras. The pro progeny of a manticore and an unusual mate um, can lead to various, uh, yeah, v variants of manticore. They are uh, magical beasts, um, that you know, and you get... Let's see, one, two questions. Uh, any weaknesses? Uh, low will. Okay, and um, how far away from their nest do they usually venture? Well, they are known to roam wide areas. Um, but since this one seems to be pregnant, you'd think that it probably is, uh, would stay close to its nest for now, because it's about to give birth. Okay, uh, so MRL is going to move into position close to the, prof to the doctor and uh, ready an attack for if it gets close. Okay. And he'll just say that they have weak minds. And that's it for his turn. All right. And that is Evelyn's cue. And Evelyn sort of shakes her head and going, Everyone always picking a fight instead of speaking to it, but very well. How far away is this thing? It's uh, 30 feet up. I know. Just within range. Four. A uh, bit of a stare. So I'm going to hit it with my stare. Mm -hmm. It's a swift action. And I'm going to attempt to cast a spell on it. Okay, what's the save? 16. 16. Okay. Uh, Chapman Compulsion Mind Effect is a magical beast, so it should be smart enough to be affected by mind affecting, right? If it's smart enough to reason, it should be. 
Hmm. Yep. Um, okay, so you lock up, you cast the spell. Uh, how does what does your spell casting look like? Do you use the regular components, or is there anything different? No, I don't have. Uh, since it's a psychic spell, there's no material or somatic components. Or sorry, no, there's no verbal. Yeah, somatic. there's no there's no verbal or somatic components, and there's only material components when they're expensive. So. Um, technically, no she doesn't no have to... Blue tart. <laughs> uh, no, I don't think so. Um, yeah, I think all she has to do is look at this thing. She doesn't even have to say anything. She just has to think. So she just gives it a real intense uh, stare and probably a wide smile. Mm -hmm. you and don't even and tell just, the joke. just lets it, you know think about how hilarious it is that these four scrumptious morsels just wandered in blindly and mm. didn't even know it was there. It really got the better of us, and it just can't believe it's good fortune that starts laughing how stupid we are. Mm -hmm. If it fails. And indeed, as it makes eye contact with you, the creature, for, for a second it looks, it, it, its look becomes blank. And then its humanoid visage starts to grin at first and then laugh, a manic laughter, uncontrollable even. Even um, with plus four bonus. Oh, because its type is... It does different. get a plus four and it's also at a minus two mm -hmm. because stare. of the stare. Okay, so then it is still enough because oh, of the stare. Uh -huh. um, yeah, okay. So it is collapsing. What does that mean for a flying creature? I guess it's. Well, it's I mean, it's not gonna just. Well, it can't fly, I suppose. It's it's if it falls prone. So it's flying and prone. Well, I mean, it is falling prone from thirty feet, right? I think. It can take no actions, and maintaining flight is like what swift action or what? Hmm. Something. Hmm. Seems weird to me that it would just fall down like that, but I guess that's what it says. Um, I would think at the least it would have to land. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's go with that. It like barely in a barely controlled fashion. It plummets to the, to the surface of the island, slamming onto it, um, but not bad enough that it would actually hurt from it. But it, uh, yeah, it lands and rolls on the floor, um, locked in a terrible fit of laughter. Mm -hmm. Aronax. And Aronax probably missing the uh, rather subtle spell casting uh, on part of Lady Emerald. He, like um, he'll be still <coughs> shuddering from the assault of sharp needles. He like will pull out another bomb and like what's so funny? Like laugh at this and he will uh, try to continue bombing it. Well, at least it's versus touch. That is enough. Bomb goes off and burns it, which it just seems to find even more hilarious. Gaia. Gaia will considering his options. Will keep his distance and. Repeat what worked the first time. Feeling the energy leaving his body. With a coughing fit. <coughs> and the magic missiles. What do the missiles actually look like? They, it, they don't actually look like anything. It's just this like wind that just... Emanates from his body, like and wrecking him in a in a coughing fit. So it's really a colorless force, just yeah, zipping through the air. Maybe just 
looking like flickering air or uh, flickering like air heat almost mm -hmm. or not, not heat but just like this uh you know when you see heat rising that it just distorts the air a little bit yeah 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 like the heat flicker over and over a desert road just shoot <laughs> okay the manticore gets a new save on his turn right or a turn yeah he gets another save Okay. She so, does. Still, oh, that's the exact same rule. So that's still bad. Still fails. Any bonus for getting hurt? Or... No. Um, doesn't say anything about that. Well, then she doesn't. So she just continues to laugh uncontrollably, rolling over the swampy, muddy floor. MRL. Will you charge at this thing? No, it does Emerald scream when he charges? <laughs> uh, I, I don't have anything ready, but probably something in heaven. Mm -hmm. Lots of vowels and very few consonants. <laughs> <laughs> and whatever it is, he's yelling, certainly guiding his blade. Because he strikes true for eight points of damage. Evelyn? Uh, Evelyn will pull out a, her wand again as a move action and uh, just kind of hold it at the ready in case she needs it. Um, and she's going to take a, I believe it's a standard action to implant herself with a mesmerist trick, that being a uh, mask shit, sorry uh, I think it's called mask misery mask okay. misery okay and she can implant herself, that's interesting and we're next with a uh... Loud, like, <clears throat> yell, like, MRL, get clear! He will, well, continue assault. Throws another bomb, and this one uh, burns the Manticore especially good. Um, it's bleeding profusely, but it just finds th this even more hysterical. Gaia. Um... Well, seeing that the creature seems to be taken care of, or it's laughing hysterically. Uh, how far away is it from me at the moment? Um, some, some Something like 20 feet. Okay. Then he will cast something different this time. And let me see if I can add some flavor to it. Yeah, still wrecked by this hideous fitting cough. One last hack brings out this blob of acid flying towards the creature. And <laughs> splashed with acid. That's a touch attack, and that's a hit for it. And it burns for two points of acid damage. <coughs> <Yeah>. <coughs> I'm feeling better now. And uh, that finally seems to knock the Manticore out of its hysterical seizure. Does it does it get the save every round? I believe so. Does it? What? Uh, but I did that from memory. I thought it says that. Okay. Um. So when you cast nope. the spell, nope. then it says on the creature. Nope. Yeah. You're right. You're right. It specifically says if it doesn't make the save, the creature continues laughing for the entire duration. Wow. So okay. it's three more rounds of laughing. <laughs> yeah, I think we can uh, just let Emeril finish it off. Let's see. Bam! Wow. And I think he does. He does. Indeed. Uh, it's not critical. Um, but it is enough. 
and with a gurgling, the laughter finally stops. What a vile creature. Ugh. No, no wonder our hosts decided to ditch us here. Well, not that I accuse them of anything, of course, but... Uh, this wasn't one of the gators they were referring to, I very much doubt, right? Mm. I'm no... I'm no you know, Evelyn I... is... Evelyn's retroactively making an arcana check to try and know about the creature. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, it's still there, so it doesn't have to be retroactively, so, yep. Oh, well. Yeah, it's a 13. 13. Um, no, you... It, it's just, it seems like a creature straight out of a, uh, of a fairy tale book from Feeland. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, Gyre will, um, cut off some of the hair from its mane. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, uh, if you can, some pieces of the nail... Maybe a scrap of of skin. Well, while we are, <laughs> well, not vivisecting. Uh, what's what's the word? Uh, pre prepping. Dissecting. Yeah, the, dissecting the manticore. I suppose it would be a nice time to try to to see if if it has some uh, some venom in it that can be harvested. Have you? Did you read up on the rules for how that works? Um, not for, uh, well, I mean, not from that last time when I mentioned it. It, it was, I think, in survival or uh, <coughs> crafting something, or maybe in poison some. When the harvesting is going on, Emery is going to mention that these things have theirs, and this one can't be very far from its own. If this is the thing that did attack the villagers here and not the beast, maybe we can find some evidence at its lair? Well, I think that we found the lair here. Isn't this nest where it seems to have lived? It does seem awful strange to me that uh, our gracious hosts mentioned nothing about this on our little journey here. Well, remember that the, 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 the whole thing in Morast happened a year ago. Yeah. No, I, I don't, I'm not implying that, oh, you mean for, yeah. Had still oh have they did they not come to the boneyard ever is it possible that this i guess did we get the sense from them that they like don't come around here much well they mentioned that they found a new burial site right they, because this one got tainted by the beast's blood so okay okay, okay. Um, right yeah right, right, right. what i was what, what he was trying to say was that they abandoned this place got it i've dropped it in the discord so the thing that you mentioned was a nest. Can we go check that out? Could that be this manticore? I suppose so. I'm, to be honest, I'm, I'm surprised to see it, that it was pregnant. It, uh, I, I was sure they laid eggs. 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 Well, okay. It's strange to me. They talked at length about the creature, the beast, uh, swimming through the water, walking through the water, and, well, unless they were completely fabricating their story, this doesn't quite seem to match the description of what they encountered. I certainly think it would have been flying, and it certainly doesn't seem like it would have had a shoulder that could have gotten bitten. And are there any, like, bite marks on it? Um, no. Yeah, well, what, what they say is that they did find they, they did fight find and fight the beast, but that does not mean that the beast is the one that did all the killings before that. Hmm, fair point. Uh, do, does anyone here know what this thing is? Well, um... that is a manticore. 
Erlang's also will roll his own Knowledge Arcana. And, yeah, yeah, and Emerald, he will right? Yep, yep, that's a magic orb. Uh, do you normally find them in swamps in this kind of places? Do we know that? Uh, yeah, you do. And uh, yes, it is not entirely uncommon to find them in places. Mm -hmm. Yeah, meanwhile... And, uh, and Aronax also knows that they, are, that they don't have any poison or venom. Uh, yeah, okay. Then, then thankfully, we we won't try to harvest any from this. <clears throat> I don't know anything about manticores or their breeding behavior or anything like that. But the fact that this one is pregnant suggests that there is something around that impregnated it, and perhaps it even has other spawn skulking about. So. Even if this manticore is not the cause of the murders or the thing that they encountered and fought, is it not possible that its friends could be held accountable? Uh, I am Absolutely. I dread to think. It what... wouldn't be the first time that an innocent beast gets blamed for something else. Well, I mean, it tried to eat us, so it's hardly innocent. <clears throat> I found my little joke funny. I still think we could have spoken to it. Might even have been a witness. I don't really think they would accept that. I understand that we're looking for permissible evidence here for the purposes of the court, but as it stands, we have no evidence whatsoever, so anything to point us in the right direction Speaking of would be more helpful than yeah, a dead carcass here with some extra bits of fur. Yeah, yeah. Speaking of evidence, uh, Mr. Emerald, what were you about to show me before this kerfuffle happened? Oh yes, the vial. There was a vial. Yeah, and speaking of vial, uh, Aronax will drink one of his uh, cure moderate wounds e extracts to cure himself up. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going to continue digging these graves. If we're not going to find any answers on this dead creature, perhaps these other dead creatures might be more forthcoming with information. Just be, just be careful. They may, they can bite you, as well. Oh yeah, um, that's um, part of the job, I suppose. And Gaia will keep digging until, but he's digging, you know, not just randomly digging, but more professionally, like knowing how to dig and to avoid damaging the coffin or the body buried underneath, feeling his way around mm -hmm. until he hits the, well, the deceased person. Okay, so you keep on digging. It's not really about strength, you see. You have to dig at an angle, use your leg to push the thing a bit. And... More it, used, really. it used to be a lot easier, though. It did. Oh, I think my leg is cramping up. I'm going to take a short break. Uh, Evelyn is going to use that wand on herself. Uh, she needs to make a UMD to activate it. Mm -hmm. Is taking 10 oh. enough? Oh, is it? Can I take 10? You um could. I'm I don't sure. think you can do that yet yeah, because on a on a natural one, the wand can't be used for twenty four hours. That is, that's not what's uh, what is preventing a take ten, taking ten. Only if you're in combat or for whatever reason. Oh right, it's for twenty. Oh, yeah. and the line that says you cannot take ten with this skill. <laughs> <laughs> right, so I have to roll it. Yeah. And the DC for a first level, it's 20, right? For a yeah, wand, yes. or is it? It's always 20. Yeah, oh, a... 
for wands, that is. Of course, it's different for other things. Good. Yeah, you made it. Okay. She activates the wand and heals herself. Uh, what is it for light? Uh, 1d8 plus, plus 1. can never keep those straight. For 5 points. Heals up. Okay. Aronex also uh, probably should have distributed uh, for uh, every party member a portion of cure light wounds and a portion of shield that he brewed, uh, he, that he made just before they left Ravengrau. Oh, I'm fine for now. Thank you, Doctor. Evelyn says, gesturing to her wand. And Emerald will point to his actual shield. Well, so that would be. So one will get a shield push, and one will get cure wounds push, and the guy will get both, right? I get both. Well, if you accept it, then yeah, then sure. Absolutely. Nobody else seems to want them. <laughs> Healing, oh, what? Yeah. I mean, so, yeah. If if Crow was here, if Crow was here, he would appreciate oh, he'd take the shield both. potion. Yeah. Huh? He'd be happy to take both. Yeah. Um. Okay. Uh. Evelyn is also going to uh, approach Emerel once she puts her wand away. She's going to approach him and she's going to say, uh, <clears throat> Emerel, pardon me. Uh, I never got the opportunity earlier to apologize. I'm afraid that my behavior might have been a bit forward. And um, I just wanted to say I'm sorry. If uh, I was inappropriate, and she offers her hand to him. Um, he will shake her hand and say, that's okay. And as he takes her hand, she implants him with false flanker. <laughs> <laughs> with what? With her a mesmerous trick. So does she have to like hold his hand for a little bit longer to, than necessary? She to, yeah, she has to take a standard action to do it. Okay, so you, that handshake is probably kind of awkward as she as she lingers on his hand. Yeah, but she like she like she she doesn't like awkwardly hang on to hand, his hand. She like she like holds his hand and looks into his eyes very steadily as she does it. Um, like she's not, she's not hiding what she's doing. She's just doing it. And she says, I assure you that in the future, I shall offer my assistance, uh, in a more formal fashion. And then she releases his grip. <laughs> and then she's going to go around and she's going to do, uh, the same thing for, for, um, you, uh, she uh, al already has uh, a one trick in, in Aronex, though the the mask mi mask misery is already implanted there. Oh, um, I think that they're only good for twenty four hours. I might be mistaken. Uh, da -da -da. Actually, it doesn't say anything about a duration. Okay. So that's just in there until she activates it. I guess. 
Okay, so Aranax has a has a mask mystery. Um, I guess that technically means that Geyer is still affected by the the other one as well, but I guess you could have expended it at some point if he didn't want to look like a handsome orc the whole time. Yeah, no, that reverted as soon as possible. Okay. She'll give him. She'll give him a false flanker now. Just in, well, no, no, he's not going to. She'll give him mask misery now. So she's using up three of her uses of the ability for today, and I'll I'll keep track of who has what. So about that vial. Yes, that vial. <clears throat> So what was it? Give me a craft alchemy. It is a vaguely smells of carrots, but I'm sure I didn't brew it. Yeah, but I mean carrots. That means most likely a dark vision extract. Well, for all I well that's not what I use it for, but it's Ooh. Common use. <laughs> and and you mentioned well you you didn't mention to us but you mentioned extract. Is it? <clears throat> mm -hmm. So it so it is a, actually an an, ex, an alchemical extract remains of, of of one. Right. You would think so. Yes. Yeah. Curious, and Aranax will like sm uh, smell it. Like he like almost would taste it, but he will restrain himself. Like that's probably not a good idea. Like it it lies in a bog for for a swamp. Yeah, it, it, it is just a tiny little bit yeah. that's left in there. Uh -huh. You you say an extract and not a potion. Well, <clears throat> if it was a potion, it probably would have expired by this point, but uh, as far as I can uh, distinguish the <coughs> bouquet, or bouquet of uh, various components, it is fairly similar to what I would have used. Should I make one of, well, I suppose dark vision or, sim or similar, similarly themed? Extract. So apparently there was a man of science camping out here at one point or another. Let's let's look more closely at this at this camping site. Okay. Give me a perception check if you want to do that. Perception. Okay. So you give it a quick look um, but it looks like it's been abandoned quite some time ago hmm. I see well <clears throat> <clears throat> so unfortunately there's nothing much to deduce from this at this point I suppose we should mm, spread our search and to see uh, if if we kind of loca locate uh, the place where the beast fought another beast, as our hosts described. Maybe uh, whatever that was, it, it is still rots in the bog, eaten by a crocodile, or what? What was it called? Blood caiman. Sure, those blood caimans are lovely creatures. I know. Maybe friendly too. Evelyn is also going to inspect the names on the tombstones, if any of them are readable. Not the names, the um, the dates more like to see if any of the the dates of the deceased would correspond with when the beast was supposedly attacking. Mm. Well, they don't really have tombstones as such. They have um, just large fetishes that are planted in the ground. 
And so there's like, no information? There's no information. Hmm. By this uh, time, um, Geyer is probably done with his first tomb, first grave, and indeed, it is empty. Hmm. Is it? Does it look empty as if it was emptied at some point, or as in nothing was buried there? Um, well, there. Well, it's it's empty, sure. but but like the the sagging, you can only explain the sagging with the fact that something was buried here at some point, and then somebody dug it back up and filled the grave with the 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 stuff, the the soil that was in the grave, and of course that wasn't enough, so now it looks sagged. Mm -hmm. So I explained that to my companions. So as you can see. The graves that were dug up are the ones that are sunken. Mm. So, so, I guess there's no point in digging the other ones, but I will dig up one of the ones that have that are not sunken. Uh, actually, can I do a, a profession check and kind of see if I can determine how old the graves are, the ones that are not sunken? Mm hmm Yeah, sure. Ish. So uh, tell with the swampy conditions. It is indeed. Uh something maybe much older than it actually looks because of all the, the conser conserving uh, effects that the swamp has, but then again the water may also weather the graves more. Uh well at least you're fairly certain that nobody added or or detracted from the site for at least a year. Hmm. I'll inspect one of the effigies or the fetishes. Yeah, the fetishes. Yeah, that, yeah, give me a knowledge religion. That I can do. That I can do. Can we make an educated guess that uh, Geyer is not the only lovely ghoul in here? So you look at the fetishes, both the ones that are dangling from the branches and the ones that are used as sort of grave markers, and uh, they give you a chill, but you can't place the tradition um, in any way. Well, this isn't for us, man. Any of the most common ones. That's for sure. Uh, if you don't mind, I will conduct the Phrasman rites over this graves. Yeah. If you think Just that, of... if you think that would help, then of course. And... Evelyn kind of steps away while he's doing that. She's going to go back over to the Manticore nest. Well, that's twenty feet up in the, in the trees. Oh. So Gaia <laughs> does the Phrasman, and he will keep one of the, the. What did you call them? Not effigies. The fetishes. The fetishes, yeah. We'll keep one of those. Okay. So you grab like it's it's like a handful of of bird bones and some string. Um, almost like a wind chime, what it looks like. And yeah, you start mumbling the harassment prayer at each and every grave. Not here. Not yet. Start just taking notes. That's going to take a while. What are the others doing in the meantime? Is anyone here good at climbing? <laughs> uh, About does, does the... Does the nest look like it could support the manticore? Oh yeah, absolutely. It's fairly. I mean, it's it's uh, the material is crouched together, but it's it's fairly st sturdy construction. Uh, well, and, re and and recent too. That's quite obvious. Hmm. Oh. Hmm. Uh, yeah. Uh, sorry, going back, Simon, quick question. How many of the graves were emptied? Six. Okay. Uh, 
uh, well, Emeril will put away his shield and try climbing up. Okay. Uh, when you take 10 on climb, where, where does it get you? 9. Okay, you're gonna have to roll. Okay, and again, to get up there, so it's kind of swing yourself into the nest. Uh, it looks a little precarious at first, but you manage to pull yourself up enough to look into the nest. And you stare into the dead face of a dwarf. Wow. Oh, Lord. That's not nice. There's a body of a uh, dwarf dressed in colorful patchwork coat, numerous pockets, that's sitting in the nest. Uh... I think Emeril is going to try to hold himself inside there to be able to look more properly. Okay. Give me another climb. It's not enough. You just miss. You can't pull yourself up high enough to swing your leg over the edge. Come on, you can make it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, do, do you need a hand up there, MRL? Yeah, he's like he's struggling. Eh, 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 like that I cat that Carlos posted the other day. <laughs> can anybody help MRL? Because I, I can't. Yeah, we can. Uh, I suppose. And he finally makes his way over and moves out of sight from the others. That's thanks to our moral support, I suppose, now. Yeah. So, you, you want to inspect the corpse more closely? Yeah, and he'll be, like, narrating what he's seeing to the others at the same time. Okay, so you hear MRL yell out, There's a dead dwarf up here, wearing a pretty colorful coat. Uh, looks like the manticore got to him. Alright, plenty of pockets on this coat. I'm gonna go through them. There's, uh, watch out down there. And he throws... A small con oil container down. This is for you, Aaron X. Uh, another one. And uh, then he grabs, or he says, There's also a hip flask. I'm going to take that one. Looks like it's made of silver. <laughs> oh, there's <laughs> still some kind of brandy inside. A nice purse made of crimson felt. Ooh, 31 platinum and 22 gold. All right, step a uh, step back because I'm gonna throw a weapon down there. A masterwork short sword lands in the swampy ground. I. And then you don't uh, have to go tossing the valuables around. And. Evelyn will cast a mage hand. Just... Catching just, the short like, sword? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, you might want to take this one too, then. And you, uh, he holds out a, an item. A wand. But uh, when Eve Eve uh, Evelyn tries to manipulate it, I believe the mage hand won't work, because it won't work with magic items. It can't even hold them. It can't. Mm -hmm. No, I don't think it can in any way influence. Yeah, it's just a non-magical. Nope. Okay. So, that's what you find up there. I see. So, uh, I suppose at this point I can try to look at these oils and vials that was that dropped me. Mm-hmm. So, start with the... Oh yeah, yeah both. easy enough. Um, the oil is clearly an oil of keen edge. And the other thing is a pungent yellow powder. 
um, that can be boiled in water and then given to a creature to drink and it will provide a plus five alchemical bonus on heal checks for providing long-term care, treating poison and treating disease. It's called a body balm. And it's a non-chemical item. Mm -hmm. So, well, if this probably wasn't the man of science that was camping here, but at least he was educated enough to carry good supplies with him. So, and well, so, Guy, are those are those greys ready yet? I suppose we ha we found your client. Geyer only dug one of the empty ones, and then he proceeded to dig one of the, f the ones that are filled. Yeah, I thought you were start you were giving Rasmund rights to all the graves. Oh, right, yeah, yeah, I was giving the, the rights, yeah. yeah. I'm not going to dig up the the dead ones mm -hmm. and rest. Does this body look like it would belong to one of the graves? Um, Give me a heal check. I am no good at those. Uh... Well, up here you can smell it, and uh, it doesn't look like it was in the ground at any point. Um, it's probably uh, not a year old, so you would think that it is a recent addition. But it's old enough to be disgusting. Emerel, is it? Does it look like it could have been a local or someone from out of town? I mean, I can't imagine why anyone would just be wandering around out here. Uh, did we see any dwarves in the? No, village? no, they were all humans. Does it have this strange skin or anything like that? Well, probably has now. Uh, ju ju okay, em tell? Emeril, Emeril, just toss it down here, and I, I will take a look uh, with with a trained eye. Are you sure that tossing down a rotting body is a good idea? Well, <laughs> no, but what what options do we have? We we have to bury it eventually, right? Uh... It's. A Emeril is going to, to hmm. he has rope, he's trying to think of some way to fashion the rope in a sort of basket hammock thingy to lower the thing. Just take him up under his armpits. And when you try to do that, the, the rope, um, digs into the flesh that is is giving way in a very upsetting fashion uh well, well, well okay Dis disregard my advice from now on 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 transporting bodies just uh, just ask guy okay who's at uh... this point probably done giving the rights to the various graves that he can find oh boy so, so, so there's only this one body, no other, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, so Emeril is going to pull out his own bedroll and stuff the body in it and then tie that to the rope and lower it down. <laughs> That's one good bedroll. Well, we'll buy you another one, I promise. I can just press to digitate it. We'll buy him another one. <clears throat> can you press to digitate the memory? <laughs> well, yeah, she can. Oh, I have other things for that. <laughs> yeah, she, can, she probably can, but. Okay, so, Guy, you return from giving the graves, and you see Emerald lowering a half composed body down, wrapped in a bedroll, and a rope tied around it. Oh. Mm -hmm. Am I gonna have to dig another grave, or are you planning on bringing this one with us? Well, I mean, you already have one that perfectly serviceable, right? Yeah, that will that one will 
work. Uh, but before that, my, let me see if I can deduce something from it. Um, yeah, you would definitely say that it wasn't in the ground here, otherwise it would be more mummified than uh, rotting like this. Um, and you'd say that it's a, a few weeks old, given the somewhat preserving nature of the even the air. Um, yeah, you would say a few weeks. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, unfortunately, we well, can't really say how he got there. Well, he was obviously killed by the Manticore. There are still the bite marks and claw marks that are obvious. Yeah, I mean, there's I... even Manticore spikes uh, still poking out of his chest. Well, yeah, I mean the more of the the process of how the Manticore, how he got the attention of a Manticore. Oh yeah, that's that would be a mystery. But oh well. Well, I suppose we we got everything everything we we could from this poor fellow, so we probably should be be done with it, with him quickly. We 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 really should not shouldn't waste any more time. Hmm. I'm trying to think else, what else we can learn from this spot? There's got to be I something mean, clearly... that we're missing. Well, clearly this... there was a group of people here for some purpose. Yeah. It could have been up to a year ago, but it could have been more recent. The dwarf could have been with them. There was obviously some sort of alchemist. The dwarf has alchemical items on him, which, you know, he may have gotten from this person or from somewhere else. Um, but the... Dark vision extract suggests that someone was here at night. And it was human, probably. Yeah, it was something that didn't already have dark vision. And the dwarf has dark vision, so. And we're missing something the bodies. That too, yeah. Well, they probably were eaten by the ghouls or something of, of that sort. Yeah, but no. Because ghouls would not bother filling in the holes again. That leave a mess. Six of the bodies. You'd find S bones and residual things, not a perfectly filled grave. So someone wanted to remove the bodies from the graves, but not make it look like they did that because they filled back in. Incompetently so, I may add. Well, I mean, if they shoddy work, if they did f fill them in, they probably would have filled them in to the to the brim. So, so as, however, the brim. No, is they did fill them in, but they did not account for the the bodies. Only well, I mean, the, the, even I suppose even people of very limited intellect could have um, came to conclusion to just. Pile the earth from around on, on the grave. Not naked. if it was dark, they were in a hurry, and there's dangerous creatures about. I doubt they would bother with it. Uh, or what are you saying? The... That it was accidental? Ghouls mm. came, ate the bodies, filled it back up? That someone took the bodies from below the earth? Exactly from below. I, well, I uh, know it may be a oh. bit far-fetched conclusion, but... Oh, sure, because usually the most complicated explanation is the right one. That well, is an interesting thought, Geyer, I have to admit. Uh, Evelyn's gonna look around for any signs that there might be, like, some sort of subterranean entrance like a cave entrance or a hole or something mm -hmm. are we ser seriously entertaining this idea that some mole person who needed a potion to see in the dark oh, might, the, uh, that's I, 
I'm not sure these these events are connected, but uh, exactly, the, we could be looking at several isolated incidents here. It could be some. Evelyn mumbles while she paces the tiny island. Perception check. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you get you give the island a quick uh look but no nah, you don't see any cave entrances or anything like that well i mean they if if there are any burrowing creatures in here that would be feasting on the corpses they probably wouldn't need any cave entrances they would just go inside the natural way like an aeronax will join lady evelyn in, in snooping around. But... <laughs> okay. And, um... Yeah, you also just give a casual glance at everything. But you spot something that you hadn't noticed before. Near the... hidden camp, or the, the, the remnants of the camp. Um, in the trees and brush along the shore of the island, there's an old coracle. Uh, what? What's a coracle? Cor like we, the boats we came in. Uh, oh, right. There's a the coracle still has an oar, moldy leather travel bag, and. Something else. Um, like, <clears throat> uh, yeah, at this point, Aronex will <clears throat> uh, back, uh, back down with a, like, <clears throat> with a rather well, shocked expression and think, it's like, oh, some mother of Geyer, <laughs> what is that? And, <coughs> and uh, he will regain his composure in in a bit. <coughs> I'm, 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 I'm sorry, I, I think I saw a face. A face? A face? A f Where? Like, over there, look! <coughs> I he, look. He, he, Evelyn yeah. looks. He yeah, will point it, looks. Looks. Yeah. There, there is a detached human face sitting in the coracle. Uh, maybe we should bomb <clears> it if, <throat> if it is a haunt. Do you are free to believe that it is? There's. <laughs> when you say detached human face, like cut off no head. It's just no no head, just the skin, no eyeballs, no teeth, just a slit for the mouth, bloody on one side, but a dried blood, of course, and looking like a th like a theater mask almost <sighs> well, I guess in the room, How fresh does it look? approach yeah, approach and inspect. Oh, you already dealt with a whole dead dwarf. It's surely a little bit of skin from the face, isn't? Well, come on, I mean, I've <clears throat> I've pr pr conducted autopsy on dead people before, but the face. How, how fresh does it look? Um, not fresh. Um, but it also benefited from the general conserving um climate around here, but. Definitely not fresh. Old. I mean, there's and a... Amaral, you um, you you check the the face. You check the the boat itself. Um, don't notice anything else out of water except there's a length of rope that stretches from the boat into the waters below. That sounds like an invitation to th to pull it up. All right. <laughs> You pull on it, and it's actually, it looks like, or it, it feels like it's stuck. What's your strength taking, 10? Uh, 13. Okay. 
So uh, you put the face down, um, so you have two hands free, and you start hauling up what is tied to the rope. It turns out it's a sack, very large, big enough to hold a medium-sized creature, for example, and it drip, drop, drip, drops swamp water onto the bottom of the boat. So I guess we will pull it open. Yeah, Aronax will, at this point, do, he will defeat his fear and, uh, and uh, come up to help Emerald to haul the, the, uh, this <coughs> sack in, into the shore. Mm -hmm. And you inspect the sack, give me a perception check. Ah, oh, the things I do in, in the name of the law. Our next, you notice some dried blood that's soaked into the fabric of the sack, and your hands slightly tremble as you dare to open it. And you're relieved to learn that inside is only some rope, a gag, a rusted lantern, and a trio of heavy knives, and a rusted shovel. A friend of Gary's. Uh, Emeril is going to pick up the shovel and like spend a, a couple of minutes with it, trying to see if he can pick up anything from it. Sorry, what was that? What are you picking up? The shovel. The shovel, okay. Um... And that old travel sack that you mentioned that was in the boat, Evelyn's going to poke through that. Okay. Um, yeah, so you you focus, Emeril, um, but it seems like whatever used this shovel used it a long time ago because there's nothing discernible left. You do feel a um, connection of the shovel to this place, however, as if it was used here in some way. And um, em uh, Evelyn is inspecting the ore. Are we, is that what you said? I thought you said that there was like a travel sack that was a travel the... sack. Yes, a moldy leather travel bag. Inside, you find a damp artisan's outfit. So a shirt, breeches, shoes, and a cloth apron. We will probably leave it there. Okay. Emerald, may um... I take a look at that shovel? Sure. Uh, did Emerald get any psychic uh, vibes from the shovel? Nothing really particular, apart from a sort of connection to this area. So I guess it might have been used to dig up the six bodies. Geyer will this... focus his attention, trying to mm. see if... Uh... Something from a more unnatural or magical nature stands out. Um, except for the wand that Emeril brought back down from the from the nest, and the oil that Aronex already identified, mm -hmm. there are new, no new magic items. Ah, yes. That speaking you can of, sense. Yeah, speaking of which, Aronex will. Uh... Uh, give the oil of Kinech to MRL. Well, you probably will make a fine use of it at one point or another. Is anyone going to want that Masterwork short sword as well? Not MRL. Okay, I want to know what to do with it. Would that help you at all, Karnas, if you end up in melee? Well, 
Probably, but I've prepared my constitution mut mutagen for this one. Okay. So <laughs> we have a party that can't do anything with a short sword. <laughs> or at least has no need for it. Um... Can I can I even use a short sword? I can't. I, I'm proficient with all simple weapons, and I think short sword is not a simple weapon. Oh. Uh. Oh uh, yeah, you're right. Okay, well, in, in that case, Emerald will pick it up and add it to his uh, travel sack. Well, I mean, it's uh, finely crafted, after all. The very least, it's worth something. I mean, it, it looks like it, it is a pattern of the steel, so... <laughs> and... Okay, so we have we have an a sack with an artisan's outfit in it. It's old and moldy. We have a face in a boat. We have did we op did, sorry did we open the 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 sack that's in the bottom that that was underwater? There was yes. And there was a corpse in it. No, it sorry. had it had the shovel and rope and oh, shovel rope. The tools you would need to dig up graves, not mole people. Okay. Well, I still think it and could be artisan's... mole people. Artisans. Uh, does the artisan's outfit look like clean? I know it's been sitting out here in the swamp, but relatively speaking, does it look like it was soiled, like it was on a body and and underground, or does it look like somebody might have actually worn it at some point? Um, give me a perception check. That is impossible to tell. It was sitting in that moldy bag out here for who knows how long. It's in pretty bad shape. The face. Does it look like... I know this is a really difficult question to ask, but does it look like it has any intention behind it the way it was cut does it look like someone was just slicing faces off or does it look like someone was trying to do something with it well it looks like a like a ragged mask really yeah somebody was using it as a disguise there's i mean there's an artisan's outfit here which suggests to me that someone was wearing it while doing a little crafting possibly Face mask crafting? <laughs> I don't know. Could it could it be possible to determine what the person that you know looked like before his face was ripped off? Like using the mask if we were to go back into town with that face, would people recognize him? Or is is it too damaged? Um maybe someone would recognize it. Well, I say we take the You'd face probably, back to yeah. town. Perhaps someone can help us identify the poor soul. Uh, this is so disgusting. I mean, because how, if, how someone, you... if someone has gone missing, well, how, how do you perhaps even propose the person to... responsible for digging the graves impersonated this person? I mean, do you even vanished. put it face on the pumpkin to give it shape or what? Ugh, oh, I... I think I'm gonna be sick and Doctor, not even you Tuesday. are acting as if you were surprised that people are capable of doing such things. Well, I mean, I'm I'm not surprised that people cut people's faces off. I'm just <coughs> surprised of what we are going to do with it. Well, we're gonna save the beast. That's what we're gonna do with it. Uh, I'm still not sure that any of this adds up to uh. Evidence of any sort, actually. I only feel that we've asked more questions and not provided any answers here. Well, at, at least I feel like we can point that the beast was never witnessed actually attacking anyone, 
and there are other dangerous beasts around so there's like no direct evidence against the beast you're right somebody should chop off the head of the chimera and bring it with but we we know that that wasn't here a year ago it's the nest is recent and yeah but it's a good example of the <sighs> sort of uh, fauna you can find in these places capable Not sure of acts that can be attributed to an innocent creature we're missing something still maybe no, someone in town can help or maybe we're missing something here but i'm somewhat at a loss i'm actually wondering if i should turn in my card turn in my harrow card well it's an option it <laughs> gives us a big hint if we're missing something or if we're confused in the campaign. <laughs> well, I mean, we are investigating, so. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just trying to figure out if we use it here or if we really need to save it for later. Well, considering um, that our current investigation is not turning up any good leads. Yeah. I mean, it's turned up a lot of stuff. I just don't know if, like, we're going to find something else that will put all the pieces together or if we're still missing something that's staring us in the face right here. I get the impression that there's something super obvious that we're just not seeing. Maybe. Okay, I'm going to I'm gonna use my card, Simon. <laughs> Turn in oh. the lost. Okay, I'll come next door with you. I'll be right back while these guys are deliberating. Watermelon peanut butter. <laughs> I'll be right back. back. <clears throat> I think that the amount of suspicious material we've turned up after just a few minutes of glancing around really i think that warrants a uh, a more thorough investigation of this entire island top to bottom i can't agree more so i think we should take 20 minutes <laughs> <laughs> in each five foot square to search this island very thoroughly. Maybe we each take a, a section of it. Or maybe one of you takes the lead and the others assist. Or maybe we help each other. That also could work. But I think we still have plenty of daylight, don't we? Okay, I'll start digging and um, maybe you can keep an eye out on what oh, you're up digging. You're very... Very keen on the digging. Well, it's I, I think we just best. need to... <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> oh, Wait, that's... seriously, Geyer, we we need to have a talk, Geyer. Seriously, I think you might need to consider some lifestyle changes. I mean, I saw how you handled that manticore, and uh, well, I think that you might be worth a little bit more than uh, digging in 
the dirt now, at least. So let's table this conversation for some other time. We got, we have, we have clues to dig up. Right. Uh, well, who here has a keen eye? Anyone? Well, uh, Emerel is going to cast again, cast another spell. And uh, we'll volunteer for uh, search and That's basically taking the lead in the search, and then the others can assist. Yeah, I'll help out. OK, so will it be rolls, or uh, are we taking 20? You take 20, and everyone else can roll. And if they hit okay. 10, then they aid. OK, well, if. Emerald takes 20, that's a 31. Nice. Okay. Um, so, Emerald, um, kind of finally gets back to his usually more analytic mind, I would dare to say. Um, the encounter with the Manticore apparently shook him up a little bit, and um, being... Um, being being told by Evelyn um, that they they should you know start a more systematic approach, he finally falls into his into into a more more comfortable um, uh, step, and he quickly scans the island, divides it up in different sections, and he he points out. Uh, what to look for, what to look out for, like what that it, stuff could sink into the the the, the soft uh, soil a little bit and and get covered by moss or or uh, leaves and such. So it'll be really thorough and leave no stone unturned. Yep. In the end, it is he himself who finds something lost, apparently in the undergrowth nearby. A leather-bound case filled with fine tools made of silver with amethyst handles. It is a set of strange-looking tools. Blades, as well as little pokers, needles of sorts, Is there any sort of... I, I, sorry, the audio cut off. I heard like a, a case with silver uh, tools and... Needles and... Oh, I know, it's, it's kind of sounds like surgeon tools or something. Well, can you give me a heel check? If, if you inspect them, heel and a perception on top of that. Hmm. Well, Doctor, um, you've uh, you have a hard time saying, or be, be, you can't be sure that it's a sort of a sort of surgeon's tool set set because there are just so many different devices in there. They're all fairly um, delicate, that's for sure. So you might be able to do intricate work, but who can tell? Well, maybe the, someone can't tell, because there is a small symbol on the handle depicting a raven. Hmm. Well, what is that? And it's, it looks like a, a brand of... Pro or... Uh, well... Uh, a franchising brand, I suppose, or of a maker. Uh, Geyer will try to see if maybe he remembers something from history involving ravens. Um, and do like a knowledge history check or local. That would probably be too vague. Um, but you can give me a knowledge local check, yeah. 
Yeah, or Evelyn religion. is. Evelyn's racking her brain for local knowledge and doesn't know it. Hmm. Maybe more local or religion? No, no, local. Not about the ravens, really. Um, Look at that. Seven. But, uh, well, it's not really about the ravens as such um, and what they stand for, but you've seen the a craftsman in the surgeon's flats of Lippenstad use emblems like that as a sort of maker's mark. Oh yeah, I've seen some of the surgeons in Lippenstad when they, you know, tend to those a bit before dying and sometimes mm. after. That is, um, that can be a personal brand. Oh, that's so my Educated guess seems to be on point for once. Well, we could go back to Lepishtar and well, look, we... for, look for a surgeon that, mm -hmm. that uses this as a sigil, and perhaps... Well, I don't think that that would be the surgeon who made the tools, but some sort of smith or crafter. No, it's not. Yeah, of course a smith or crafter made the tools, but it was a surgeon who used them. But I think that the mark would be the mark of the smith rather than the mark of oh, the surgeon. Right, right, right. Okay, misunderstood. So, and these well, are very fine tools indeed, being made of silver and amethyst, uh, semi-precious materials, of course, but uh, nonetheless, uh, cut above. Wait, the Simon, can, can you stem. clarify as, as DM? Was it what Geyer saw the mark of? Like a craftsman or the surgeon? Yeah, like a maker's mark. Okay. So it's the person who made the tools. Right, right. Okay. Okay. So we can ask who this person made them for. And you can give me an appraise check, Gaia. Maybe I can appraise them. Oh, wow. Oh, I'm rolling amazing. You are. And I think this is the right time to roll those because. Um, you know, talking about it, and and at first, you when you explained it to your to your group, you kind of got things confused, and then Emeril points out, no, it's probably more like the people who made it use the raven instead of the people who use it, and when he says those words, you you immediately yeah, it immediately clicks, and you realize, of course, the raven symbol is used by Zbraslav Ora and Sons. They have a workshop on the tiny anatomist's alley. Hey, exactly what the anatomist alley. So find whoever made these tools, and perhaps he could tell us who he made them for. Well, this sounds like a <coughs> certainly an honest local folk, but. Road to Lepistat is... Yeah, I mean, road to Lepistat is long, and once we leave, we probably won't return here, so... We, we should make sure yeah. that there's absolutely nothing left on this island whatsoever. Exactly. Before we leave, but this is... An, this is intriguing, I'm I'm not sure... That, again, it's no evidence that that disproves... Uh, La Lazen Lanz's... It proves nothing, but it gives us a line. It gives we... us something to go after, at least. Uh, if I may go back to the purse on the dwarf, did it contain only the platinum pieces? No, platinum and gold. No. 31 platinum, okay. 22 gold. And yeah, yeah. If you could identify him? No, nothing like that. 31 platinum and how many gold? 22. Are we splitting that up? Well, it, I just dropped in the chat um, for, for posterity. Yeah, I've, I've written them in the party notes and we can, we can figure out that uh, after this mm -hmm. session. So you finish the search of the island. And uh, kind of, it's getting afternoon. And you realize that if you want to catch the, the
the shop of the toolmaker still open, you would probably have to leave soon. Hmm. Uh, it's the best line of investigation we have, and I don't know how much more we can dig up here. Let's take a moment, perhaps while we're on the ride back, though, to to try and assemble everything that we found here into some sort of coherent uh, story of what may have happened. I have. Do we need to do? Do we need to do anything else in Murrast while we're here before we go all the way back? Yes, suffer more prejudice and. Uh, I don't think oh, we absolutely grow a thick work. skin, guy, or it's everywhere. Oh, it's like I don't have one. I was being facetious. These people, they don't know much and care less. Well, that's true. Here's a wild theory we have six missing bodies, surgery tools. And the beast that's composed of body pieces. Could this be where it was born? Hmm. Well, at least they got some replacement parts out of these ones. Yeah, I'm <laughs> considering that the beast of the stuff that we have in custody looks nothing like human parts. That, well. Ah, whoa, 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 what was that? I, I find Emerald's theory quite sound. Um, I mean, it is possible that they were attempting to replicate the success of the creator of the beast, but I, I think I m might be fairly sure that who, whatever they were doing, they surely did not create the beast that we have you know as, as our defendant it Unless, seems though yeah. a lot of this is just speculation and i think best would be if we find some information and build up from there instead of just speculating fair fair enough yes i have to wonder if Perhaps we're... Never mind. Uh, it's... it's still too early to tell. It's not even worth it. We should get back. Um... Uh, we should get back. Um, Simon, how, how much time did it take us to, to make the travel? Well, you, you mean what time it is now? Uh, both. What time is it now, and how long did it take us to, long get, to, here? to get back? Okay. Uh, it is around 2, and it um, took uh, to, to get here to Morast from Lippichdad took about 2 hours. So, given that businesses in Lippichdad are usually open from 6 to 6, you have something like less than 2 hours left. Um, it morassed. If you need okay. anything to do, if you want to, if okay. there's anything you want to do. Okay, so in theory, we could go back to Lepichtat, get more information, and if we feel the need that we could, we could come back here and dig up some more before returning right before 10. Yes, you would probably um, have to miss out on some sleep, but you could absolutely. Geyer will try to get some of the swamp weed to go. Um, I'd like to try and find Lands before we go, uh, or La Lasney before we um, before we depart. Just to ask him real one question. Okay. Uh, you find him sitting in his rocking chair back in front of his hut, but as you come in uh, into in, in, into sight, he. Uh, almost jumps up from his chair. It seems a little bit um, incredulous to see you. And he says, oh, uh, uh, oh I, I was just about to head inside. I'm, I'm terribly sorry, sweetie, but 
I, uh, d- d- it's important town business, you see. Uh, oh yes, of course. Um, I, 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 uh, we were just on her way, on our way. Thank you so much for being such a gracious, gracious <clears throat> host to us while we have been present. Uh, I just had one question for you, if you don't mind. Yeah, yeah, sure, 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 sure. Have you ever had a problem in your town of uh, disturbed graves? It's probably odd timing, but I have to go and check on Frida real quick. Thank you. <laughs> we should also ask if they recognize the face. I don't think we want to show them that yet. Uh, if uh, I don't know if people in this town are in together on something or if they're really like just being attacked by a sounds... serial killer or what, but I, I would agree they're not entirely sympathetic. So... Sounds sounds like she soothes herself. So, um, okay. so he, he respond. He stops what he's doing for a second, looks at you, a uh, little bit of surprise in his face, and you get what? No. The beast only took living folk. Um. Yes, the beast only took living folk, uh, and yet it seems that some of the graves at the old site have been uh, have been desecrated. Well, interred, desecrated. The the corpses uh, uninterred removed from the ground and the soil filled back in well i wouldn't i wouldn't know anything about that and i wouldn't want to have anything to do with it we moved on a year ago and we found a new place so so i'll see you tomorrow in court Uh, before we go uh where can i buy some of that chewing weed that you have oh He stops before going inside, open the the door handle in his hand, and he says, "Oh, I got some for you right here." Spits it at your feet. He spits at my feet. Mm-hmm. And then okay, heads. With that, wait, with no, that no, Evelyn. No, no. Go ahead. This is something's happening. Yeah. So with that, um. Oh, I gotta do something about that, but what? Well, Guy is apparently so dumbfounded by this brazen, um, just rudeness that he stands well, there wishing for something clever or, or smart to do. Um, if if Geyer is like frozen in place for a second at that, Evelyn will very quickly just take out one of the quills that the Manticore shot at her. And she'll just take it and she'll flick it into the into the sodden wood timbers at the ground <laughs> by this guy's feet. Um, and she'll look at him in the eye and say, we got something for you, too. And she'll smile and walk away. And he'll look at the at the the the, the spike still like um, vibrating a little bit as it sits there stuck in the wood. And he just go, it'll, it'll watches Evelyn walk away and <laughs> huffs and shuts, uh, throws the door shut behind him. As he shuts, I go like, well, I'd be careful if I were you. The disturbed dead, they remain restless. And he casts ghost sound. <laughs> and Gaia yells at the door, I'd remain restless. And then mumbles something as he walks away. Uh, ah, and fine. from from somewhere in front of the of the house, a disembodied howls emanate. All right. So, like I said, you you basically you could spend two more hours here with a good chance of getting to the business in time, but uh, you might as well. Leave right away and come back later if you want to. This is a shit town of shit people. We should we'll do that. Back to yeah. Leverstadt. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and on the journey, uh, Emerald will spend some time with the wands because I don't think we've identified that. Okay. No. All right. 
go ahead. So you uh, bushwhack and then hike back to the where you parked the carriage and left the man servants or lady servants. And on the coach ride back into town, um, MRL uses the time to look at the wand and identifies it as a wand of ghost sound. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> wow. How many charges? 22. Okay. What the hell was going on then? Ghost sound. He had a wand of ghost sound. He had those alchemical items. It seemed like he was trying to ambush something. The dwarf. He had keen edge and he had a, a, a body bomb for healing. Um, he was. It seems like he was trying to catch something in an ambush, but the dark vision implies that there was someone else at the camp. But then again, the, the camp was rather old. It, might, it was. Could, that's could true. That's related. true. The dwarf is much newer. The dwarf yeah. is much. He it's, could have been. Yeah, I don't know. Someone trying to hunt the manticore or something. Yeah, I don't it know. is quite possible he was a hunter for the manticore itself. And, uh, so you debate the reason why the dwarf would be there as the carriage um, as the sounds of the carriage wheels change when they go from dirt road to cobblestones and you enter Leopardstadt proper. Uh, Evelyn um, gives some instructions to the drivers to take you straight to the surgeon's flats or to be more precise, to the tiny anatomous alley down here, where the carriage stops in front of the shop of Breslov Ora and Son. It's about uh, yeah four four thirty. Um, the sun is already hanging low. Everything is starting to um, to to get a little hazy and dusky. But the shop is still open, and a tiny little bell rings as you enter it. Um, Sprazlov Ora is manning the uh, counter. So sort of bookish, and you can tell taciturn man. He wears thick spectacles. And as you enter, he looks up from a thick ledger, where he was probably doing some bookkeeping. And uh, adjusts his glasses and says, Hello, customers. Welcome to Sbrazlav Order and Sons. Some of the finest quality tools of all of Feeland. What can I help you gentlemen with? Oh, we would, um... And lady. Big admirers of your work. And, um... Well, we... Uh, well, I found some of your crafted tools. Indeed, and it was quite fascinating. If we could return them to their rightful owner. Mm -hmm. So, uh, would it be hard for you to uh, <clears throat> determine who, 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 which one of the f famed surgeons procured these tools from you? And we probably show you, you the... and show them to him. Yeah, and again, uh, again he just, again he adjusts his spectacles and inspects them, and he says, "Ooh, uh, I I remember those. It was a little bit tricky to get the handle weighted just right with silver. It's not very good to work with, but uh, I remember that the customer insisted on silver to be used. Let, let me." Let me look. It uh, <clears throat> and he disappears in a uh, back room and returns with a an even thicker ledger than the one that he was using. And he slams it on the counter, opens it. Let's see here. Yes. Um. Uh, and you can tell that he has meticulous record keeping of everything he sells. 
the purchaser was a Vladka Kostel. Yes, I remember her. She was she was red haired Verizian woman wearing a green silk scarf depicting a swan. I remember that it was a beautiful piece of clothing. Uh and I also, I actually know she works for an auction house uh, in town somewhere, she mentioned, but I am afraid I don't remember which one. Hmm. I, I see, so. What, do you, oh, in your ledger, does it say when these tools were purchased? Hello? Uh, yeah, 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 I'm trying to figure this out. Oh, sorry. I wasn't sure if you heard me. Um, he says, uh, it's been um, two and a half years ago, but Vladka, like I said, works for auction house, so maybe she resold tools at some point i see uh could could you describe uh what was the order like what are these tools useful for uh, they are tools for surgeon or chirurgy. Would, would you say that they're like, like, would you say this is a regular set or is there anything particular that she requested? It is only that it is made from silver that makes them particularly special, but uh, it's a uh, the, the 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 rest of the tools is fairly standard equipment for physicians. Hmm. And uh, so I'm sorry, I'm a little confused. Is is he saying that this that she she actually purchased them from him? She placed the order, or that? Well, yeah, I I probably um, I made that more confusing than it's supposed to. He made them. At some point, because that's what he does. He's a tool maker. And uh, forget what I said about the customer insisting on them being silver. That's not true. Um, he probably just liked the challenge of making something from silver and then found a buyer in Vladka Kosto who bought them in her uh, as, as, as a reseller, basically, with the intention okay. to sell it again. So... Somebody, so did it, is he saying that Vladka placed the order from them for them in the first place? No, no, no. He he just made the set and then Vladka some day saw it and okay, bought it. Okay, so okay, okay, yeah. okay. So he just made them for for kicks and then Vladka bought them off of him. Yes. Okay. I guess that means that we need to meet with this Vladka. I'm sorry, I don't remember where exactly she worked. We'll, I'm sure we can uh, figure out where to find her. She sounds like quite the uh, standout woman. Ooh, many people stand out in Lippenstadt. Well, thank you very much for your help. Yeah. You're welcome. Does he seem like he's being completely straightforward with it? Yeah, he does. Okay. Right, well, I think we ought to find this Vladka then. Can I roll like knowledge local? Sure. Yeah, I don't know. 
maybe. Uh, no, you don't know any black. Uh, you you know that there are several auction houses in town. Same goes for Gaia. Perhaps our judge friend can aid us. It's not too far from here. It's just a few blocks away. And she did seem disposed to help with this investigation. Even if Although she can't she... tell us where it is, she'll be able to direct us to those who do. Actually, we probably shouldn't just go wandering. We shouldn't probably be seen approaching yeah. her offices too often. Uh, is there just like a, a, a town hall or something? Like somewhere we can go and just get some general information? You, City you, hall. Um, you could just ask. Yeah, that would all fall into gather information. Okay. But that does take one to four hours. So you're running the risk of maybe taking longer than the auction house is open. Well, um, does Geyer know of any auction house? Not really. Uh, it's not really the scene I would move in. It's usually just going from the graveyard to wherever the body was found and I don't actually remember any murders or dead bodies in the auction house. Do I? No, no. No, not really. Is it really a matter of 1d4 hours to like walk over to the middle of of or wherever the the city hall is or maybe even to the hotel we're staying at and ask for a list of all the auction houses and then go through all the auction houses and find the one that is the right one. That's that's what you get for the one D four I mean, how many how many auction houses are in Leopardstad? I think a it's couple. Like two and, at most. Well it says well he says that there are several. And okay. uh, that you know, going all the way across town Okay several okay. times. Well, I guess we have no other option but to try to gather information unless somebody else has a suggestion. Mm, not really. Yeah. All right, I guess let's do that then. Is that another knowledge roll? No, that's diplomacy. Oh, oh well, that's better. Anybody else also asking around? Yeah. Helping, hopefully. We'll try and see if we can get people to talk. So you help. That's twenty-two. Is that it? Uh, it you can't hurt by trying to help, right? No. <laughs> Yep, you help. It's 24. Doctor. Carnes? Yeah, yes, I'm here. Uh, diplomacy. <clears throat> well, my diplomacy is... Yeah. Yeah, it's just one short of helping. Um, let's see how long it takes. Do you want to roll that, or do you want me to roll it? I'll roll it. Go ahead. Two hours. So, a wild chase across Leperstadt ensues. And uh, at first you, you use the coach going from here uh, to the to the city hall, and then you run inside to like get all the local auction houses, being a little frustrated at the sheer number of them. Um, and then you head back out, getting onto the, the 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 carriage again. But the carriage gets stuck every now and then in wandering groups of people that are here to uh, to you know 
attend the the trial and the satellite events. And um, you ditch the coach and instead run across the cobblestones from one of the auction houses to the next one. And of course, as it is always, um, the last one is called um, Ledov's Chirurgery Merchants. And you should, probably could have thought of that earlier, but uh, didn't make the connection. And as they are just about to shut the main door to close for the day, Evelyn shoves her foot in the little gap and says, Not so fast, please. And there's a little mousy um, man that was just about to, to shut the door. And he looks up at Evelyn and says, Um... Excuse me, ma'am. Uh, we are about to close. There are no more auctions scheduled for today. Uh, <clears throat> oh, we're not here for an auction. Uh, we're actually hoping to speak with the pr proprietor of this establishment, uh, um, a Madame Custo. Oh, she's she's not the proprietor. She just works here. I, mean, oh, I she think she's. Works here. I think she's. Uh, um, yeah, I think she's. Uh, uh, sure. Why? Why don't you just? Uh, let, just wait here, okay? Of course. Thank you. And he disappears and then returns with a red-haired Verizian woman who smiles and says, Oh, um, greetings, my lady. Uh, how may I be of service to you? Ah, well, uh, you may be... Uh, Instrumental, actually, in aiding us with a certain, uh, let's call it an investigation that I and my associates here are on, my uh, my comrades, Amrel, Geyer, and Dr. Aranax, and myself, Lady Evelyn Throd, are here uh, to ask about a particular set of tools that you may have purchased from a... Uh, a smith down in, down in Anatomist Sally. It would have been some time ago. Uh, these tools, actually, if we have them. Do we have them? Yeah. We do. Oh, she says. Oh, yeah, I remember those. I thought they were very pretty with those yeah, nice little ravens and the shiny silver. I, I do remember who, the um, gentleman who bought it. The he was wearing an unusual high hat, which was odd, and green-tinted reading glasses, which you don't see very often either. Um, why, don't you, why don't you just step inside for a second, uh, and we'll ask the auction master if he can give you a name. That would be most appreciated. We would, we would be very happy to come inside and to have the answer to this, if you can provide it. And you step inside, and she takes you through the empty uh, hallway of the auction house, and uh, with a quiet, in a quiet voice on your way over, she says, I'm afraid Mr. Clud is not, um, uh, is, is, is not a man who easily divulges information on clients to just anyone walking in off the streets. Um, <clears throat> So I, I think you should. You, you will have to get a little creative with your inquiry. Uh, don't worry, Madame Castell. Uh, we are not just anyone. And as she says this, uh, Evelyn is prestidigitating herself to clean up like her hair and her appearance after running all the way across town, wipe the sweat off of her brow. Nice. Vladka yeah, smiles um, mischievously and nods. And then knocks on the door that says, Olo Clud, Auction Master. Yes, come in. And you open the door and step into a small office that is stuffed, but neatly organized. And you find a stuffy, sort of pretentious looking man with a bald head and tufts of hair above his ears. Oh, it is you, Flaka. 
So uh, I see you have brought company. Uh, greetings, lady. Uh, do you wish to sell something at one of our auctions? Uh, actually, no. We have not come to sell anything today, although I have to admit that this is a rather fine establishment that you have for yourself here. I do occasionally get into the business of uh, buying and selling certain items of significant value. As you can see, I am the sort of person who trades in such things on occasion, and uh, I would be more than happy to consider your auction house for such activities in the future. However, for the time being, for the time being, uh, we simply have a question for you. A question, huh? Mm, yeah. I see. And uh, when would that question be? Uh, we are hoping to inquire after a name. Uh, one of your buyers of a particular set of tools uh, that we have here. Um, as you can see, they're rather distinctive, and apparently the gentleman who purchased them was also rather distinctive. Well, well uh, although we only have a he, physical description. He hardly even glances at the tools, and he uh, he um, says he brushes it off, and she says, he says, this, um, well, lady, I'm I'm uh, afraid you are mistaken. We do not just give out the names of our clients. That uh, it was not good business, and I hope you understand. Of course, of course, it's not good business simply to uh, to go around just spreading things around that ought not to be spread. Um, it's 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 bad for business, in fact, when things get out that shouldn't get out. Um, Guyer mumbles, she'll pay for the information. Uh. Evelyn just kind of glances at him and says, I think my friend here is trying to say something. <clears throat> Why don't you speak up? I said, she'll pay handsomely for the information. <laughs> uh, I, assure, I assure you, my lady, this is not a matter of, of, of price. It is uh, clearly, or it is, it is simply a matter of professional integrity. Of course, I... as you and I understand, I'm afraid that my friend here is a little bit more um, <clears throat> of an earthy fellow, shall I say, and he believes that uh, simple transactions are the way that the entire world runs, but you and I understand that sometimes there's more to it than just a bit of coin. Like I said, yeah. professionalism, reputation. Yes, uh, that is quite correct, and uh, our reputation would suffer immensely if our client who uh, um, I do not know if he, he would want me to, to, to give you his information. So I of course. do not dare to risk it. I understand that. Uh, but what if it became known that your auction house uh, had a proclivity for selling instruments to murderers? Well, but we do not sell instruments to murderers. So. Oh, of course, I'm sure that you don't intentionally, but what if we were to find uh, a pair of items, perhaps such as these, at the scene of the desecration of multiple graves and dead bodies scattered around and a face removed from a corpse? Oh, that's, oh, that's, and these being the only tools present capable of such a task. A quite a, a, testament, a testament to their quality, to be sure. Quite a grisly tale you're you're spinning there, but uh, one one tale that we can prove. But, Would you like to see the face? No, 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 no. I, oh, we can provide it. I assure you. I think he should see it. It's it's quite a sight. Why don't you Why don't you show him the face, Geyer? Uh, no, no, please give me an intimidate check. No, please. That it's. The, oh, this will be. The, I. It's. It's all right. I please keep keep your your evidence with you. I'll. Uh, 
I'm sure our client w would like his valuable set of tools returned to him. And he be happy to oblige. That he clearly misplaced. Uh, <clears throat> let Indeed. Me, let, let me look it up. Um, Vladka, do you remember the the, the the realm? And then have a little talk about helping, you know, giving him the information that he needs to look up the name in their extensive records. And he says. Uh, 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 see, so it turns out that we actually did not sell it to an individual per se. We'd sold it to a corrugery supply shop in the surgeon's flats. Uh, it's operated by a man named Ratnish. This red niche fellow, uh, I don't suppose he happens to wear green tinted glasses and a high hat? Uh, yes, yes, that's exactly what I ah, said, Blood, says Vladka. Okay. That, that yes, must uh, be him. Perfect, excellent. Well, thank you so much for your assistance in this matter, Mr. Uh, Crud, I believe? Clud. Clud. My mistake. My mistake. Thank you very hmm. much, Mr. Clud. We'll be on our way, and... Uh, uh, I didn't catch your name, miss. Uh, my name is... Well, my name is Throd. Evelyn Throd. Lady Evelyn Throd. Of the Throd name. I see, miss. Uh, Madam Throd. Uh, I hope this... Uh... <clears throat> These tools will be returned to their rightful owner soon. Oh, I assure you, we will be making sure that they make their way directly back to him. At this point, Yorick relieves himself. What? Yorick makes a poop, and Guy is like, Oh, I'm terribly sorry about that, birds. Hope you don't mind the mess. <laughs> he. You bad boy, Yorick. Uh, this, this is a. Uh, and he is uh, clearly upset by this. Is Gaia cleaning it up? No. Hmm. Uh, actually, he is. He he cleans up after he's spent that. Terribly sorry about that, but he doesn't do like a particularly good job about it. But then, it will leave a stick. This is real walnut. Uh, uh, he's be upset about it. Evelyn, Evelyn just kind of prestidigitates the the last little bit of the stain away as she leaves, and she says, "Thank you very much again, Mister Clud. Clud, crud, Clud." Hmm. And so you leave. Geyer, we're going to have to work on your people skills a little bit. It's a bird. I'm not talking about the bird. You have to understand, when you're dealing with high-class individuals, you can't just go around asking for bribes left and right, or offering bribes. That's not how it works. These I people have money. I thought they don't what need... rich people did. They don't... What? No. This man has more gold than you'll ever see in your life. He doesn't need a little handout from you. And that's how I thought they get the money. Oh, okay. We'll work on this later. Don't worry about it. Well, it's in my experience that people with money can't even say hello without charging for it. I do appreciate the support with the face, though. That was that was a, a nice addition. Glad it did something right, Your Highness. <laughs> So you have one more address, but unfortunately it is now definitely after business hours. Yeah, I don't think it matters. Yeah, we're, we're still, still going. Go. Yeah, you're still going. <laughs> and it turns out your chase all around town takes you just a block down from your first stop. The Surgeon's Flats. Where Retnish's shop um, 
it's just another storefront in the row of supply shops. This is specializing in corrosion equipment and um, peeking in through the window you can see the insides of the shop being cramped, piled with skeletons, pickled things in jars and strange alchemical components. But it is closed. Oh, I like this place. And it is scheduled to open the next morning at 6. At least that's what the sign says. Well, we could, we knock anyway. yeah, we could at least try to mm -hmm. knock. And we do. Sure, yeah. I guess. Yeah, we knock. Sure, you knock, but there's no answer. Doesn't look like a like a store that um, like a live-in store kind of thing. It's just one one floor. Don't seem to be any living quarters. So whoever runs it probably lives somewhere else. Hmm. Maybe we can. Um... make our way into the facilities by ourselves. Mm. Well, I think we need the information from the person. We're not exactly looking for physical evidence, I guess. That's true. Okay, if you were a person that specialized in chirurgical implements and you've closed shop, I think we should find the closest tavern. Hmm. Do we? Well, we, we Worst don't know. case, find a drink, if not the person we're actually looking for. I suppose it wouldn't be a, a bad idea to ask around. Perhaps some of the locals know. Mm -hmm. well, if you can and make... if it's the local watering hole, then they might know where he is, or know about this person. So that's oh, your plan? Like, that might be another gather information, yeah. That will definitely be a gather information. Would you like to take the lead on this diplomacy check, Geyer, or should I? Oh, you know me, I'm a people person through and through. Happy to take over. And with that, Geyer doesn't hesitate and makes his way to the nearest tavern, pub, or guest house. Yeah, go ahead. Go roll the pulse. Okay. Does anybody want to help? You know, 15, 17, and 19. Okay. So. Spent two hours. Uh, finding the next tavern, talking to some of the regulars, and you learn that yeah, people know who Red Niche is, that he's running a, a store in the Surgeon's Flats, but he's not popular. He's sort of a miser and a penny pincher. He's only interested in, in profit, and nobody's ever seen him spend a coin. Um, so that also means that he's basically never at the tavern. Uh, there was one occasion a uh, long time back when he made a big sale where he dared to have a watered-down ale. Um, oh, bold. Mm -hmm. But nobody is in a personal relationship with him, knows where, where he lives. Uh, but he always opens up his stores store first thing in the morning. And he always leaves right on time when the bells ring 6 p.m. I 
don't like the waiting. Does does it sound like, aside from being a miser, he sounds like a fairly reputable person? Or you kind of get the sense that he's like uh, a little shady or what? Well, he is interested in business, money, uh, and and uh, making a sale. Okay. That's what defines him. Well, we may have no other recourse but to wait until morning. There must be something else we can do. So, we uh, to waste the night. Yes, so none of the people we... Well, none of the people Geyer asked this. What was that last thing? None of the people what? Know where he would live. No. It's not making friends with tavern, tavern people. Well, the only other thing I can think to do tonight is, I don't know if we can still gain access to our witness, but perhaps we can ask him if he knows anything about what we found in Marest. I don't know if he was present at all or not. At this point, it would be helpful to at least figure out if he's ever been there. Yeah, I guess it, it would be useful, yeah. So you want to get back to the courthouse and talk to the beast? Yep. That's just all I can think of. Okay. Guess so. mm -hmm. So by the time you get to the courthouse, um it is definitely dark outside. The gas lanterns that are lighting up the streets of Lepidstadt are sending flickering lights um, over the cobblestones, making your shadows dance. And you're starting to get a sense of why people in Lepidstadt don't like to go outside at night just makes your skin crawl the way your footsteps echo through the side alleys and a general feeling of uneasiness in places where during daytime you would, wouldn't even think twice about going there or crossing them but at night everything just different even the courthouse the way that it sits there the um, punishing man looming in front of it like a giant of justice ready to strike down the evildoers. And Kapo, still there, trying to find an old court rulings and uh, old courtroom recordings. Any help, any clue how to defend the beast? And um, with his help, you managed to get another meeting with the creature that's still tied in the basement with four heavy chains. And as you enter, it turns around and its huge face seems to light up a tiny little bit, maybe. He can't really smile the way that his, his uh, the, the muscles of his face are replaced by just taut wires. So, in, so instead he makes a grimace as you enter and he says, You, you set me free now? Are you friends? You've come to set me free? Well, we are friends, but I'm not setting you free yet. Not for lack of wanting. Why not? Hmm. 
Well, it's a little more complicated than simply doing whatever we want. There's... But I didn't do any of it. Oh, well, we help you. us then. We believe you, but we need your help if we're going to get you out of here. I didn't do it. We understand that, but we're trying to figure out what did happen, especially at Morast. We've been there ourselves. Have you ever been to Morast? No. I don't know Morast. I've... It's... At the end, edge of the swamp, I never really go there. Uh, it's not a nice place. Can't blame you for that. But it's not but you've nice been nice people either. Yeah, but but you've been to the swamp near Moras, right? <laughs> Did. Did the villagers there attack you at one point? No. Are, are his shoulders bared? Yes. He's, are there he's any like... signs of a big bite? Do you ask him to let you take a closer look? Would you be willing to allow our doctor here to inspect you? A little more closely, uh, we have they the villagers at Morass claim that something attacked them and that it was bitten in the process of the scuffle. I've had quite a close look last time with it, too. and I'm not sure I've noticed any any scars. Say so there next. Although he himself is glued to to the <clears throat> to the bars, is uh, observing the the beast. <clears throat> the beast uh, grunts as it turns a little bit, so that the doctor can get a better look of it. it has shoulders fine. That's true. You can see it. There are, I mean, there are plenty of scars, but they're only in places where his, um, the, the various parts that make up his body meet. Definitely no bite wound or anything like that. Well, this is something that we can certainly use in tomorrow's testimony. Well, but that is... That'll certainly put the... What was his name? Uh... Lasnes. Lastness testimony on doubt. But well, that is only one notch in this testimony, which no doubt. I doubt be... it's enough to. Yeah. I doubt if it's enough to convince a jury, but it is a piece, uh, a chink in the armor. It is probably enough to in incur doubt, doubt, but not very much. Oh, wait. Hmm. Well, I have to admit, it is helpful to know that you were never there, so we should be looking for something else completely, someone else or something else. There's no physical evidence against you, no scars that match, and no uh, no pieces of evidence left in Morast that they're bringing with them. Simply a witness testimony, which we can cast a certain degree of doubt on, at least. I don't think that's going to be enough. No, it's not enough. We need to find out what actually did happen there and be able to prove it, which... So far, we're not putting all the pieces together, but... I think our best bet at the moment is to delay the trial, or at least the sentencing. 
I don't think we are going to be able to achieve that either. Honestly, if uh, if Mr. Barrister uh, Barrister Koppel here knows his law to any degree, he insists that we have to make this happen by tomorrow at 10 a.m. Yeah, yeah, yes, he agrees. <clears throat> I'm afraid that's the deadline. There's gotta be something. Perhaps the best thing we can Wait. do is. Um, oh, we've never actually asked you your name. My name? Do you have a name? Name? I don't want to call you Beast. That's hard uh, to name. Everyone just calls me Beast. Well, how would you like to be called? How about Brian? He starts with a B. Opens his mouth, looks at Kyer, his face a uh, maskless, uh, uh, an expressionless mask. He says, I don't know. I will have to think about that. Well, I'd like to call you something other than Beast, but for the moment, okay, think about it. Um, do you remember anything that can help us? I don't. I didn't do it. I wasn't yeah. there, he says, I and he was... kind of talks himself into a, a growing called... rage. And as he does so, he kind of jumps against the, the iron rods around his cage and, and he, he strains the chains, pulls on them. Okay, okay, Brian. Do you remember, do you know a man called Ratnish? He's flying, he's still in a rage. I mean, saying, okay, doesn't, it's not going to snap him out of it. He just keeps rattling on the bars. It's uh, the barrister is getting visibly upset and is halfway up the stairs already. He should... We understand that you weren't present and that you don't know anything about this, and we won't bother you any further about it. I think we know everything we need to know. We will see you in the morning. No, we have to know if he knows. Of He's already Ratnish. made it very clear that he doesn't know anything about what's going on in Marest whatsoever. And he continues to smash the chair that he was had been sitting on the simple wooden stool still in his rage and then looking By at the, all means looking at the broken pieces he stands there in the twilight this uh this this giant hulk of a creature breathing slowly <sighs> 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 Slowly snapping out of it. I didn't do it. We believe you, B. We do. People skills, Geyer. We really need to work on your people skills. Are you serious right now? I was trying to be nice. I asked him his name. Oh, no, How yes. Not... Very sentimental and all. But it gets us no further to... Polite. Okay. How would you feel if people called you by some nickname that you didn't quite approve of? Oh. I guess you've never been in that position. Ah, 
You don't know everything about me, Geyer. And I don't really care about it, but truth of the matter is, people who look like us don't normally get the same treatment that people that as people that look like you. Well, people who act like you don't normally get the same treatment as people who act like me either. Oh, spend your nights digging graves. See how people treat you. Regardless, I think there's nothing more we can do here. I, for one, am feeling quite sweaty and a little bit dirty and would like to take a bath back at the hotel or the uh, boarding house or the coaching house or whatever it is that we've lodged in for the evening. Yeah, I suppose we might as well already. It would be. It becomes hard to uh, to focus my my thoughts. So you choose to retreat for the night. And uh, when do you wa uh, want to meet again? The next morning, do you want to meet at the courthouse? Uh, uh, no, actually. because if it starts at ten and we can get yeah, let's... earlier than that, we can. Uh, we heard that Ratnish gets opens up real early. So yeah, hey, we're hey, hit we... that first morning. Yeah, so at his store at six. He opens yep. his store at six. Yeah. Five thirty, if possible. Oh, you meet at his store at. at, at... Uh, early. Okay. Um, so the next morning, um, yeah, with, you know, after talking to the beast for a little bit and then uh, having to get home and then meeting back uh, that early the next morning, you're going to need 40 suit saves from everyone. Oh. Let's see. Lovely. ML9. Ten, ten, ten. Okay, so Gaia, Doctor, and MRL, you all feel slightly fatigued the next morning. Um, so you're fatigued. And you, you take a minus one penalty on all other checks and on saving throws against sleep effects. Evelyn, you're driven. You want to get need to get to the bottom of this. You probably hardly slept, but only because you're so excited about uh, the investigation. Well, it's uh, an interesting challenge, to be sure. Exactly. Uh, was I'm sorry. Was uh, that night of rest enough to recover uh, damaged uh, constitution? Yeah, that uh, it was. Mm -hmm. All right. You meet uh, at five thirty. Um, the sun or the light has not really crept over the horizon yet. The gas lights are still on. And um, only the earliest risers are in the streets of Lepichdad. And you hang out in front of the Ratnish store until um, uh, you see what must be him hurry down the street towards his shop. Um, yeah. He's a little man, very simple clothes, very haggard looking. And uh, he fumbles with a set of keys in front of his door when you approach him. Um... Yes, uh, <clears throat> I'm about to open. Uh, please, uh, is there anything specific you're looking for? Uh, 
yes, uh, you are Mr. Radnish? Um, why, yes, I am. It's a pleasure to meet you. I'm Lady Evelyn Throd, and I am here with my associates uh, because I have a question for you. Uh, you purchased an item uh, perhaps some time ago from an auction house, and uh, she's going to show him the tools. Mm, yeah, he glances at them. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, even if I did, uh, <clears throat> what's so to you, lady? Well, we were happening to, hoping to find out uh, if you are the owner of these tools, or if you perhaps sold them to someone else. Oh! <laughs> he unlocks uh, the door and opens it. Oh, p please, I'm... <clears throat> I, 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 I pride myself somewhat in uh, my confidentiality, and I would Never volunteer such information. Good day, he says, and enters the store. Okay. Lady Evelyn. Yes? I'm going to use my people skills. Give me just one moment. It may yes. be, though. Let's see how this, let's see how this turns out. Uh, Evelyn's going to cast Charm Person on him. And right. after, after using Hypnotizing, er, uh, yeah, uh, stare. What the hell is it called? Hypnotic stare. <laughs> so he enters the store and he kind of stops on the doorstep. And he says, But why don't you just come in and look around? Maybe there's anything you want to buy? Oh, we would be happy to come in and look around your shop. And, um... Peruse, yes, of course. As you we'll will. Peruse, browse. And perhaps chat a bit as we're doing so. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, Conversation, mm -hmm. what's the appetite for purchasing? You know, he says as he uh, gets the store ready for a day of business. Like, opening up some of the of the the, the um, displays and dusting off some of the tools he's selling, and he says, "You see, I, I would of course never tell anyone about my customers' names, but I would certainly put two of my customers in touch, maybe so that they can share their experiences." Of course, that would be, well, that would be most lovely. I mean, everyone should know the quality of the goods that you sell, and uh, we would simply like to meet someone else who is just as discerning as we are when it comes to our surgeon's tools. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, sir, so, yeah, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> and he grabs something from the back of one of the displays. Maybe I can interest you in, in this wonderful set. Of tools. Yeah. And you look at them. Let's see. Wait. Sure. <clears throat> yeah, we look at them. Yeah, yeah, I'm trying to figure out what oh. kind of set it would be. Oh, there we are. And they are a fairly simple set of surgeon's tools. Um, and he says, this is so, uh, a, a lot simpler than the one your, uh, your friend has purchased. But um, this is only 20 gold pieces. Oh, and it looks very practical. Mm -hmm. I believe my friend here would be more than happy to pay for them. Guy like, like which uh, turns towards MRL or Dr. Aronax or somebody who looks less filthy and with more money. Hmm. Oh, why? Sure, of course. I mean, 
I'll, I'll be happy to put these tools to good use, says Dr. Aaron X. All right, so that's 20 gold pieces, mm -hmm. and it's a regular set of surgeon's tools. And he said, says, well, now that uh, you have joined my eclectic club of customers, um, I feel like it is almost my responsibility to get you in touch with the, 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 your colleague who bought this set. Uh, he's a quite striking fellow, very dapper and black from head to toe. He uh, owned a chemic works somewhere nearby. Um, I believe Vorkstag was his name. Yes, Master Vorkstag. And I think he has a partner in his... Yes, Vorkstag and Grimes Chemic Works, I believe. Vorkstag on... And Vorkstag, you said, was the one who made the purchase from you. Yes, yes, yes. And... Oh, God. I'm pretty sure they made all... They intentionally made all of these names challenging. Hmm. On the movie, they were only challenging for me. So we've got... Braslav. Whatever, it doesn't matter. Okay. Um, shall we continue this goose chase? Well, as long as we have time. Uh, you would probably still have time for, for. Well, we want to be back at the courthouse before 10, safely before 10, I'm sure, so as to not run the risk of, you know, falling in some sort of technicality. So, uh, let's, yeah, so, let's do it. well, you would have to find it first, so that's a D4. So if you're unlucky and you don't already know of it, Aranex might know of it. He's trained in knowledge local. Am I? I don't know. Are you? No. Then you really don't know much outside of the campus, I guess. Um, so it would take some time to find it. Okay. Um, never thought gather information would be so important, but I guess we'll be. I'll be rolling. You want to roll? Okay, so let's see how long that took. No, oh, just an hour. Hmm. Makes sense. Since it's not really that far away. Um, in fact, it's down here. At the southern end of town. And let's see. <clears throat> so you learn a few things as you ask around. Um, you learn that Borgstag and Grine are both well respected merchants. Ryan is sort of a peculiar-looking fellow, but gnomes just are that way, you know. There are no workers ever seen going on shift at the Kimmick Works, but the smoke from the chimney never stops. Odd, that. And it's also known that Master Vorkstag has a great many friends in high places, and whenever any minor trouble comes his way, someone is always ready to speak up on his behalf. You 
piece to so that, that that's what you learn from the people and they can they are also able to point you to the location and if you go to check it out you will find a tall iron chimney that belches yellow clouds into the sky from a small brick factory large leaded windows arch in a dozen places on its outer walls but they are so begrimed as to be opaque a large gate opens onto an inner courtyard beneath a sign proudly proclaiming Bork Stack and Grind Kimmick Works. The building has two floors and a tower, topped by a lightning rod. As you come close to the building, you can smell the acrid fumes coming from the chimney. And you can give me a craft alchemy check if you're even if you're not trained. Well, yeah. even if we're not trained. Yeah, because it's not that hard. Um, mm -hmm. But harder than that. So, uh, everyone over 10, which means Gaia and the Doctor, um, suiting fittingly, you identify the smoke as a byproduct of acid and bleach production. Not uh, so unfamiliar, considering that last week I have exactly produced acid <coughs> myself, so... How Unfortunately, I I'm, I'm gonna have to run, guys. I gotta go. Uh, oh, okay. I guess that's no. a good uh, good no. spot, uh, yeah. place as any to end it for the day anyway. It has the electricity thing on the top. The lightning rod. Yeah. Yeah, I'm. I would hang longer, but I've got somewhere I've got to be. So that's all right. Yeah. Don't worry. The, I also have a, a place somewhere to be, and that would be in bed. <laughs> Yeah, I was looking for a spot to end anyway, so okay. I think well, that's good. But we, we might want like to. But we might want to find another date because the holidays are coming up. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, on holidays so I will be, be all free. For me. 